Tampa Bay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Better strap in and get ready. Because it's Jay and Zach. Jay Wrecker and Zach Blotner. 12 to 3 on DAE. Happy Friday, everybody. It's high noon here. And it's Jay and Zach. 95.3 WDAE. That's Zach Blotner. I'm Jay Wrecker here with you. Hexel Johnny Dugas on the other side of the wall. Z-Man, what's going on, buddy? How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. It's Masters, a Friday. Master, uh, Master dang Mike. Dang it. That was what, what I forgot. I got to get it set up. Oh, this guy. I, I'm here, but I'm, I'm just going to slide over for Master a second. Homa. I'm just going to be over here. He's over there. Okay. Well, Zach is doing a good job right now, making sure that we can have the Masters up on the screen here in the studio. Uh, Masters weekend is upon us right now. Max Homa, Bryson DeChambeau, they are tied atop the leaderboard at seven under. Scotty Scheffler right behind them at six under. And then it goes down from there. Uh, it's pretty wild. Uh, gotta love the Masters and everything involved in it. We'll keep our eyes on Tiger Woods, of course, as well, uh, to see if he can make the cut. That's uh, We just want to see Tiger make the cut. I don't care if... It, I don't know if anybody cares Like if he wins. like You want him to win, but um, you just want to see him in contention. You want to see him play four days. So we'll talk about the I'm Masters. Uh, we'll talk some Tampa Bay Rays baseball. They're back in action this weekend at Tropicana Field as they take on the San Francisco Giants. Uh, or T-Cress, the drive. They'll be live at Tropicana Field today from 3 to 5.30. And then, of course, the inside pitch at Ronnie Lane from 5.30 to 6. Uh, the second portion of the pregame show with Chris Adams Wall at 6. And then first pitch, 6.50 tonight from the Trop. It is Rays and Giants. we got Captain Mike's fishing report at 145. Aaron Bronstetter from Sportsnet joins us at 115 to talk about UFC 300 tomorrow night. Uh, and also some big news uh, when it comes to the Ultimate Fighting Championship, so you don't want to miss that. What the heck is Tom Brady talking about? And a lot of things going on in the world of college athletics. The Campus Collective, we will head there at 1.30. But we're going to start the program today with the Tampa Bay Lightning. They fall to the Ottawa Senators last night, 3-2 to two in the shootout. I don't know if you felt this, Zach. I know I did being in the building. It was kind of like the dog days of April like everybody was checking their watch. Everybody, eat. there was one minute left to go in a two-two game, and the fans weren't really into it. The players were kind of just going. Through. There's three games left. They know where they're at. They're a playoff team. They've clinched their spot. The focus right now is to just kind of play the right way. Don't sustain any major injuries. They pick up a point, but now you look ahead. Only three games remaining tomorrow against the Washington Capitals. Uh, on the road, 5.30 start there. Monday against the Buffalo Sabres. And then Wednesday against the Toronto Maple Leafs, Zach. And the playoffs are coming, baby. They're right around the corner. I cannot wait. Next week. Yeah, and they're set in a lot of ways. I look back to the game in Pittsburgh. You and I referenced, like, they clinched their playoff spot prior to it. And you could tell in that game they came out a little flat. They fought back, ended up only losing 5-4. to four, And then they wiped the floor with a Blue Jackets team that really isn't any good. But that was a game, too, where they gave up a couple goals. And you're like, mm-hmm. eh, you can tell they're just kind of ready to end the year. Um, kind of like we see in baseball at the end of spring training and get into the postseason. And this Bolts team, I think the regardless of what happens these last few games down the stretch here, they've shown who they're going to be this play, postseason. And that is not a walk in the park for either Boston or Florida. The big thing for me is, I know earlier in the week we kind of chatted, and I just assumed that the Bruins were locked in as their opponent. There's only one point right now separating the Panthers and Boston. Now, mm. given... Boston still has a game in hand, as you mentioned. But down the stretch here, I'm less worried about what the Lightning are going to do, and we'll talk about the two big things for them here in a minute. But you look at the Bruins, they are at Pittsburgh, who's going to continue to fight. Great game between them and the Red Wings last night. At Washington, a team that the Lightning will see next. The Lightning will see him tomorrow, but Boston has them in their second to last game. In Washington, the Caps are fighting for a playoff spot. Ovi's turning back the clock. And then they wrap up the season against Ottawa, which shouldn't be as nearly as hard of an... Uh, a game is Pittsburgh and Washington, and that's in Boston, too, to wrap the regular season. So they got those three games, and they got a point to work with ahead of Florida. The Panthers, just two games left. They're at home for both of them, but it's against the Sabres and Maple Leafs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Toronto, similarly, kind of, there are where they are, right? So who knows what the Maple Leafs will be looking like as they wrap the regular season. I do think that there's a, you know, it's... The edge goes to Boston. They have a game in hand and a point. But I don't think it's the craziest thing in the world to say that the Panthers, with a couple wins down the stretch here, could steal that number one spot away from the Bruins, who are obviously going to fight hard themselves to uh, to win You know the number one Atlantic seed. So 
I don't think that that's so set in stone, even though it still looks like it'll be the Bruins. Those will be the two teams, though, obviously, and those games will be the ones that I'm watching, Jay, here down the stretch uh, when it comes to outside of the actual lightning and what we're looking for on the Bolt side of things. I know the consensus uh, there in Toronto, or excuse me, there at Emily Arena last night was understanding what the standings were like, but also kind of having the realization that it's probably going to be the Bruins. But, hey, I, either way, two good hockey teams. The Lightning are going to have to play their A game if they're going to want to advance deep into the postseason. And the main thing, and John Cooper said it last night, was to try to stay healthy. That is the most important thing that they have to do. And unfortunately, we saw on a couple of occurrences last night, Tyler Mott, Eric Chernak, both knocked, uh, you know, both picking up knocks when they were uh, blocking a shot. Chernak was able to come back, which was a relief, but Tyler Mott was not. The Lightning announced today he's day-to-day with a lower body injury, but from what I've seen from uh, our guy Ed Encina from the Tampa Bay Times, they don't expect him to play against Washington again Saturday, but they also don't expect him to miss the start of the postseason. So that's a a good sign there, Zach, and you can kind of, I guess, in that instance, rule out something like a broken foot, which... You know, could keep guys out a uh, you know a month or so. Yeah, and, and those are the two big things. Uh, again, one of them being stay healthy. Don't yep. get too banged up. Don't get too injured. You and I have talked in length about how uh, whether it's Chernak going down last year in the first round, um, Pointer not being fully healthy against the Avs. Colorado a couple of years ago. Yeah, I mean, outside of the the back to back Stanley Cup wins. You and I truly do feel like what eliminated this team more than their opponent was the injury bug the last couple of seasons, and. You know that's not to take anything away, especially from Colorado, who you win the t- you win or the champ, you win the title, mm-hmm. like that's yours. The Maple Leafs, eh, it's a different little chat, I think, because that's not a team right. that really did anything after the fact. Um, but the health, that's the number one thing we're looking at for this squad down the stretch. Which, again, if you look at their body of work since the trade deadline, how the additions have fit in, how their top players are going out and being, you know, successful. You look at the career year for a lot of these guys in points, whether it's. Uh, you know, Sorelli and his scoring. Um, Nick Paul. Nick mm-hmm. Paul's another guy. So there's a lot of things to point to, and that's before we even chat about Andre Vasilevsky being the best between the pipes and Steven Stamkos, arguably the best captain in the NHL from a leadership standpoint. Mm-hmm. So you have all of those things, and you ball them all together, and you're like, please stay healthy. And that's really the, the focus for what you're doing the next three games on the ice if you're the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, too, when you look back at that first cup that they won in the bubble, and they did pretty much without Steven Stamkos. So he did score that dramatic goal there against he Dallas. He had his moment, for you know, sure. Three minutes and change, and just I remember his beard. His beard was never that long, ever. Um, <laughs> but, wow, just an incredible memory there. And then, you know, you lose Alex Klorn at the end of that series against the Canadians when he broke his leg. Uh, but Anthony Duclair missed the game last night. That was a little bit of a stomach bug. You notice that they held Mitchell Chafee out to give some opportunities for some other guys. How about Connor Sheary being able to score that goal last night, Huge getting a getting on the scoreboard? Because as much as he hasn't played in the last couple of weeks, Zach, you're going to need everybody, and you never know what injuries pop up. And I like, even though he hasn't played well this year, and we've been very vocal about that, to have a guy like Connor Sheary who has experience. Like, this is a guy that's been through the rigors of an NHL postseason playing with Pittsburgh, playing with Washington. He's not going to be shying away from the moment. And if you can get him in a position like you have last night, in the slot, taking an incredible pass from Nikita Kucherov, more on that in a second, and backhanding a puck in the net, I, I like it. I think that's a good guy to have in reserve, a good guy you can rely on if you need to slot him in there in case you have a guy that's out due to injury. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, it's a bonus. Sherry, at this point, like if he can bring something to the table, I know that the hype, with having him come in was that he's played with a lot of top line guys before, whether it be Crosby or Ofechkin and, and now getting out there and maybe playing with Kucherov. Well, like not necessarily the situation he's going to be in when it comes to this team and where he's playing and what he's contributing, but he does have playoff experience. And I think that that matters as we do roll into the postseason. to see him get that goal last night is a huge boost to his confidence, hopefully into what he could add and what he could do. I liked it. I thought it was good. Let's hear that Sherry goal from Dave Randorf and our guys at Bally. Nikita Kucherov dishes off the point, points the give to Kucherov. Great pass, back and it scores! Connor Sherry on another brilliant feed from Nikita Kucherov. The great Dave Randolph from the call there, and, and Zach, it's, it's just so crazy to, you see Kuch coming down the right wing, he, he takes a quick peek even before he gets to the puck, and then he just spin and fires that puck into the middle of the slot where Sherry wasn't even there yet. 
Shuri gets the puck, and it's right on his stick. He backhands it past Forsberg in net. I just it, it you just marvel at how good Nikita Kucherov is. It, it's just insane. It's insane, and you know well, it never again, gets old. Either. It, does, it never gets old. You're right. It never gets old. So I, I feel good for Connor Shuri being able to hear him talk last night. I, I just. I think he's a guy that thought it would be different going into this season. You and I both spoke before the season. I thought he could be a 20-goal scorer because I thought he was going to play more top six minutes. Yeah, They put him on the third line. That's not really what his game is. You could see the difference with Chafee, Paul, and Asimont. They're just going 100 miles an hour. They're, that's not his game. Shiri's a little bit more of a, a skill set guy. Uh, it was good to see him find the back of the net. I wouldn't be surprised if he scored some big goals. Maybe not a ton, but, you know. Goals here and there throughout the postseason to help the Bolts. Yeah, and again, that's just bonus, right? So, like, we like how this team has kind of come together in a lot of different ways. That's a guy who hasn't necessarily added what we were hopeful of at the start of the season. But, you know, there's unlikely heroes all the time in sports. Right. And especially you especially and I did a whole in hockey. segment on it <laughs> earlier yeah, this week. That's like, right. He's a good example of a guy maybe in a lesser capacity that didn't have a good regular season but could really endear himself to the Tampa Bay Lightning fan base with a strong postseason. And his contract's more than one year, right? Wasn't it two? I think it was, yeah, two three, or three. Two yeah. or three. Um, but let's let's talk about Nikita Kucherov. Okay. Let's talk about the magician. Insane. Do you want to, so I have the I have this tweet from yesterday. I'll give this, and this will set you go up ahead, perfectly for the chat that you had last night at Emily Arena and all the things that were happening around the mm -hmm. Bolts. And I definitely want to hear about the other people that weren't lightning superstars that were in the building because I know there was a <laughs> few of them. So I saw this list pop out from Big Head Hockey last night on Twitter. And this is the whole list of NHL players who have put up more goals and assists in a season, both, than Kucherov is doing this year, with a couple games to go, by the way, three games to go. 1981, Wayne Gretzky. 1982, Wayne Gretzky. 1983, Wayne Gretzky. You're starting to see this theme here. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky in 1984, Wayne Gretzky in 1985, Wayne Gretzky in 1986. It's 81 to 86. And then a different name. Mario Lemieux, Super Mario up in Pittsburgh, 1989. And yes, you guessed it. Back to Wayne Gretzky. He did it. Uh, actually, it looks like he did it in 87 as well. So technically 81 to 87 before Super Mario did it. So you have a bunch of years from the great one. You have one season from Lemieux and Nikita Kucherov. That's the list, Jay, for players that have put up more goals and assists combined in a season than Nikita Kucherov has this year with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Mind-boggling. That just, I mean, you don't have to, this is the type of thing where we've argued all year about Kucherov versus McKinnon. I don't need to argue. I'll just show people this. Tell, tell me how you fight this, com, this, this point, this tweet, these stats. He's literally on a list with Gretzky and Lemieux. That's it. Like, case closed, fingers, you know, cleaned, everything's done, we're rolling on, we're rolling forward. And that's just from a number standpoint. So what, what? Is the numbers for that? That's points in a season? That's Well, yeah, goals and assists, so that's got to be points. So th that's the list of guys that have put up more than Kucherov is right now. Well, I know, like, Phil stands. had 152, and Kuch is at, what, 140? I'm just reading the list. I, I mean, I you know, that's the tweet that was sent out. I didn't double-check it. It's okay. So this guy, actually, there's a tweet right underneath that has some players that also did it. All right, mm -hmm. so this list is BS. I take it all back. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Well, I, didn't, I, didn't I, wanna... I only shared it. I'm blaming Greg Wolf because he shared it first. Blame Greg. Yeah, I am. Blame Greg. Third leg Greg. I'm <laughs> unsharing this. Regardless, this is a guy who's putting up numbers that we've only seen from the great ones. Gretzky, Lemieux. Exactly. I mean, we can splice hairs on, like, who else is on the list. Um, in the tweet below, it says Lemieux had it a few more times. They mentioned Esposito in here. Yager. Iserman. Okay, so like adding some of those names to the list. Still, it doesn't devalue it at all. No. But how about the 100 assists in the season? When you think about 100 assists in the season, you got Gretzky, you got Lemieux, you got Bobby Orr, Connor McDavid's at 99, and Cooch is at 98. Safe to say I think both those guys are going to add to the list. So you had three guys with 100 assists in the history of the NHL, and you're going to get two this year. So I'm with you. Like, How do you look at Nikita Kucherov and not think at the very least he's number two in the Hart Trophy balloting? Right, I, I think it's McKinnon and Kucherov, and I think there's a conversation to have about who, but I think it's close, and I think who you're giving the edge to in Tampa will do it with Nikita, in Colorado they'll do it with Nathan McKinnon. My issue is how many people are putting McKinnon just head and shoulders above Kucherov in this conversation and have been for months, for months, when it doesn't make any sense. Like I, I don't want to begrudge Nathan McKinnon. I don't think at any point in the last few months you said anything negative about him. No. We've talked him up. He's talked Nikita up yeah. in his own words multiple times in his career. 
But the fact that we're sitting here and it and it seems like it's a landslide for Nathan McKinnon to win this year, based on all the other things we're pulling and hearing from outside of Tampa Bay, that's the part that grinds my gears. If if you're arguing for Nathan McKinnon and you're saying he slightly just edges out Nikita Kucherov in terms of who should win it. Okay, I, I can understand that. But you're having people that are just like blindly saying he's the guy without a real argument. And then they're using stats like I just did that are made up to try to bolster the reason why McKinnon should win it. Um, it it's just, it is a close race. And if you're trying to call it anything otherwise, you're, you're just making stuff up. Again, like I just did with that tweet. Nikita Kucherov, uh, he is, he's had his hand in more than 50% of the goals for the Tampa Bay Lightning this year. And that was a stat that I spoke to or I discussed with the great Phil Esposito last night. And you guys know every intermission I I talk with Phil. And I said, Phil, is he the MVP? He goes, without a doubt. If I had a vote, he would be the MVP. And he used that same stat. He has his hand in more than 50% of the goals that the Tampa Bay Lightning have. Forget about if they come on the power play or the empty net. It doesn't matter. Like the Lightning are in a position that they're in because of Nikita Kucherov. If he wasn't there, he probably or they probably wouldn't be in the playoffs. So last night, I'm up in the press box with Bobby the Chief Taylor and the great Rick Peckham, and I had a conversation with them, Zach, and I, w- I wanted to see if you kind of agreed with the sentiment. Connor McDavid and Nathan McKinnon, you can quantify what makes them so great. You can mm-hmm. see how fast they skate. We know how the analytics are, the numbers, the, the, the advancement in technology. You know how fast these guys skate. You know how hard they shoot. But outside of goals and assists and points, like how do you really quantify how good Nikita Kucherov is? I, I don't think you really can because the two things that set him apart from everybody else is what? His vision on the ice and his IQ. And they agreed. They said, I've never seen anybody like that. So I start thinking about a guy in my head who was similar to Nikita Kucherov that wasn't the biggest, wasn't the fastest, wasn't the strongest, but he saw the ice like no other. He was the smartest guy on the ice. But I dare not bring up his name, Zach, because he is the greatest player ever to play in the National Hockey League in Wayne Gretzky. So I go to Phil Esposito after the first period and I say, Phil, what do you think of Nikita Kucherov as far as his vision and his IQ? Where does it rank up? Where does it rank all time? And he goes, Jay, it's up there with Wayne Gretzky. I said, is it Wayne Gretzky and then Nikita Kucherov? He goes, no. Kucherov is right there with Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux. He added him. So I said, you're saying that Nikita Kucherov has similar IQ and similar ice vision to Wayne Gretzky, the greatest player ever? Sheesh. And he said, absolutely. That's crazy. It wasn't Jay Retro saying this. Yeah. This is 717 goals in the National Hockey League, Phil Esposito saying that. And if Phil says it, I believe it. He also told me that my shoes don't match, and he's right, <laughs> because I just realized yesterday that they match my outfit, but they don't match each other. Thought that was hilarious. But, Zach, we're, we're comparing Nikita Kucherov with arguably, I don't think it's arguable. The greatest hockey player of all time. If you take away all of Wayne Gretzky's goals and he still leads NHL history with the most goals, if you take them all away, he still has the most points with as many assists as he has. You look at 100 assist season, Gretzky has the top seven. Cooch ain't catching him. And then it's Mario Lemieux, and then Gretzky has the next four before you go to Orr, McDavid, and then it'll be Nikita Kucherov. Nikita Kucherov in the same breath as Wayne Gretzky. That's wild. I mean, it's not though, right? Like, no, it is. Hearing you say that makes me like take a pause because I'm like, holy crap, we're talking about the greatest hockey player that's ever lived and one that's in our backyard right now, Mm -hmm. scoring a ton of goals and helping assist a lot of others. And it's like, it's both crazy and I understand it at the Mm -hmm. same time, if that makes sense. No, you're right. But it's, think about who it came from. Yeah. Well, that helps. And Phil is that, (laughs) Phil's not that guy. Phil is if if something's not up to par or if he thinks a guy is not as good, he'll say it. He's gone on record before. You may think a guy is good. Phil's like nah, and it doesn't matter if it's the Lightning or somebody else. He'll say they got to play better. Remember, this is Phil Esposito when the Lightning were up three nothing in 2019 in Game One against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Came to me and said, Lightning, you're going to lose this game. I go, what? They lost that game. They lost the series. Phil saw it before anybody else did. This isn't bias. This isn't a you know a jaded type of view. We don't have our you know bolts colored glasses on. This is legit coming from one of the greatest soccer players of all time in Phil Esposito, comparing Nikita Kucherov to the best to ever do it in Wayne Gretzky. So to me, when you look at what he's done this season, 
I think he has to be the MVP. You heard it from Chris Johnston north of the border. You heard it from Greg Wyshynski from ESPN. I wish there wasn't this narrative out there that Nathan McKinnon's had this locked up and it's been in the bag for a couple months. Because if you really watch Nikita Kucherov, he's not beating you because he's dominating as far as he's faster, he's bigger than you. He's smarter than you. He sees the ice better than you. Nobody sees the ice. You could say McKinnon's great. You could say McDavid's great. But I think you go back and forth like, all right, he's faster. McDavid's probably a little bit bigger. Maybe he's a little bit better of a stick handler. Is he not a bull in the china shop kind of guy like McKinnon is? But I don't think you could say either one of those guys sees the ice as as good as Nikita Kucherov. I don't think you could say either one of those guys is as smart as Nikita Kucherov when it comes on the ice. That, it's just, it's incomparable. Because if you compare him to Wayne Gretzky, that means there's really no parallel playing in the game today. Have we, and I know Gretzky's done different things. I know he was just in town, what, a couple months ago for Coop's catch. Mm -hmm. Have we heard uh, the great one kind of talk about this heart race at all this year? Like late, late, late. Go look that up. Yeah, I'll see if I can check into it. My guy Eric Blankenship just shooting me a text about it. Like, I wonder what the great one would say. Because I think we're talking about opinions weighing heavily. Phil Esposito is mm-hmm. certainly one that does. I'm interested to see what Gretzky thinks about the heart race right now. If there's anybody that would be able to kind of take us inside, you know, and give us not a definitive answer, but at least some more uh, levity to the conversation, it's Wayne freaking Gretzky. We He's- probably would hear him uh, more if they let him talk more on the NHL and TNT broadcast instead of some guy that scored how many nine goals in the in the in the league. There it is. Yeah, somebody targeted and claimed him in the group chat last night. Like, why? You can have him. That guy is supposed to grow the game, and he hasn't. Um, yeah, hey, I shout got- out to Ryan Whitney though. Fighting the good fight. I do like Ryan Whitney, though. Fighting the good um, fight for Nikita Kucherov on a national scale. Always Ryan Whitney. Uh, Anson Carter as well. Shout out to Liam McHugh and Henrik Lundqvist and Wayne Gretzky and everybody involved over there. And, of course, you hear P.K. Subban. We're trying to get him on the program, too. He's been showing Kucherov a lot of love over there on ESPN. So just think about it, man. Number 86. Last night, two more assists in those games. Great pass to Connor Sherry. Great pass to Braden Point. Unfortunately, the Lightning come up a little bit short, but... We're focused on the postseason now. I want to see Nikita Kucherov get 100 assists. You want to see Stammer get 40 goals. They were focusing a little bit too much on that on that five on three last night, and I think that that was their ability right there to be able to shut the door. But they were focused on a little bit, and that's going to happen at the end of the season. We saw it with Tom Brady and Antonio Brown. Remember those two pop passes that they did at mm-hmm. the end of the game? They didn't come back to bite them, um, but that's what happens at the end of the year. You want to try to get your guys their accomplishments. Okay, we're going to hit this break. We can come back on the other side. A Masters update. And also, we talk about Tiger Woods and how he moves the needle. We'll discuss some of the other great needle movers in sports currently and in the past. Don't go anywhere. It's Jane Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Play ball! What happened last night at the Trop? We can't wait to tell you. Get the latest Rays highlights, news, analysis, and more all day, every day. We're your hardball hookup. This is the home of the Rays. 95.3 WDAE and AM620. Streaming live on Alexa and the free iHeartRadio app. From the Safe Touch Security Traffic Center. WDAE Traffic Update. Westbound I-4 is heavy from Paul Buckman Highway past Forbes Road and slow from the Selman Connector into 275. There's an accident on Cypress Gardens Boulevard at Cypress Gardens Road. Also a crash southbound on McMullen Booth at Curlew that's off to the side. And there's a wreck on Little Road a little north of Ridge Road at Adonis Road. See traffic problems? Call the traffic tip line at 866-545-9595. From the Traffic Center, I'm Daisy Ash. This report is sponsored by Try the New Limited Edition Orange Dreamsicle Frosty at Wendy's. Try the new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty at Wendy's. It's like walking down recent memory lane. To have Orange Dreamsicle Frosty in our timeline is truly something special. And we shouldn't let the moment pass us by. And be quick, it's only available for a limited time. You know, the biggest reason people don't invest is because it's too complicated. Crazy. You'd rather have the cash sitting in the bank, earning less money, than use it. So you're not saving or investing. You're losing money month after month. It's depressing. If you're looking for an investment you don't have to check 10 times a day, Noble Gold Investments is your answer. Precious metals are simple, and Noble Gold Investments understands them. You'll get a dedicated American expert who will run you through your options and be your personal contact whenever you get in 
touch. No call centers. No hassle. Just simple, straightforward, and real. This month, Noble Gold Investments is giving a free quarter-ounce gold standard coin with every qualifying IRA investment. Just use the promo code GOLD. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com now. noblegoldinvestments.com. And if that's not a reason to put your money somewhere else, we don't know what is. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Investing in precious metals, including gold, involves risks. Consult with your tax attorney or financial professional before making an investment decision. Sneezing, coughing, a stuffy nose, runny nose, post-nasal drip, interrupted sleeping. I just I was groggy at the end of the day. Allergies and sinus congestion were making Jana miserable. Then, a friend recommended Navage. Navage provides immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus germs and other airborne irritants. Navage helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. Navage gave me instant relief. I didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I didn't have to wait an hour, 90 minutes. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to wait a minute. I just, I ran the rinse and I felt immediately, I felt better. Stop suffering from congestion and start breathing and feeling your best again with Navaj. N-A-V-A-G-E. I've had people ask me how I find relief and I tell them Navaj immediately. This thing is amazing. Navaj is available at Navaj.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Last year, over 3 million people called Morgan & Morgan in their time of need. And with over a million of those calls coming from previous clients, friends, and family. My name is Jeannie. I was sitting in traffic and I was hit twice from behind by two different cars. My first thought was Morgan & Morgan. I was very surprised at how easy it was. I did not have to go into the office. I did everything by text. They needed documents. I could sign them. I could upload them. I could send them right back with ease. Call Morgan & Morgan. It's easier than you think. Thank you for trusting us. We've become the largest injury firm in the world because we've won a lot. The word is out. Size matters. Reputation matters. We're America's largest injury law firm for a reason. With over 900 dedicated attorneys and climbing, we're ready wherever you are, whatever you need. The choice is easy. We're just a phone call away. Injured? Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Ah, the sounds of baseball. But if you have hearing loss, you miss out on the action. Audibel Hearing Centers provides a better quality of life for those suffering from hearing loss. Offering free hearing tests by trained specialists at their 26 locations. Don't buy hearing aids online. Get yours custom made. Make an appointment for Audibel Hearing Centers at floridahearing.com. Better hearing through professional care. Proud partner of the Tampa Bay Rays. Pack your bags and stay close to the fun at Days Inn by Wyndham. Oh, I can't wait for our upcoming vacation. Me too. It's time to get away. Will you find us a hotel? Yeah. With comfy rooms. Oh, yeah. And free Wi-Fi. Uh-huh. Close to the action near all my favorite things, right? Right. Well, do you have an idea about where we can stay? I have 1,500 ideas. Seize the days at over 1,500 convenient Days Inn locations and earn Wyndham Rewards points on every stay. Days Inn, one of 24 trusted brands by Wyndham. Find your hotel at DaysInn.com. Right now at Macy's, it's time for a spring refresh. Shop our great shoe sale and save 30 to 40% off Tommy Hilfiger, Madden Girl, and more top names. And take 35 to 70% off during our diamond sale for a little sparkle that goes with everything. Plus, get our lowest prices of the season with 20 to 60% off furniture, mattresses, and more specials. Download the app for even more great deals at Macy's. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. To design the Lexus ES, all we had to do was listen. Your ears said exactly where to put the speakers. Your eyes told us where to put the available head-up display. Hey Lexus, find me an alternate route. Even your right foot helped out. It let us know you'd enjoy a little more torque. Turns out, you had a lot to tell us. We certainly heard you. The Lexus ES, not just for you, by you. See your Wesley Chapel, Tampa Bay, Clearwater, and Sarasota Lexus dealers. Get your most accurate home value estimate at DuncanDuo.com. The free iHeartRadio app has over 100 commercial free stations waiting for you to explore right now. Like Alt 2K. Don't want to be an American idiot. A commercial free look back to alternative from the 2000s. With Foo Fighters, Weezer, Linkin Park, Green Day, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Alt2K, and listen now. iHeartRadio, free never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. 
When you can't crank up the speakers in the office, plug in those earbuds and download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. Welcome back into Jay and Zach. Zach Blobner, Jay Retcher here as we head to Augusta. The latest from the Masters. Not everybody got to finish round one yesterday. I woke up this morning. I'm in there getting ready for the day. It's the 7 o'clock hour, and here's Tiger Woods, and he's trying to make the cut. He's trying to be competitive. It was a lot of fun to watch him yesterday. He's at one over now. He's into his second round of the day in his group, a couple guys. And I got to get this one out of the way first, Jay. Shoot it. Jason Day is in his group. Oh. And those parachute pants were the ugliest thing I saw. No shot, no picture, nothing else that was worse than what Jason Day wore yesterday, except for maybe what he's wearing today. This ugly ass vest that he's got on. I, like, it's like Jason Day just went into his closet and said, what are the worst things I can wear? Do you just even care, Jason? Troll people in Georgia during this tournament. Uh, on the flip side, the other guy in that group, Max Homa, is going off at the top of the leaderboard now. Seven under. They're through seven holes today in their second round, but he is on fire right now, tied with Bryson DeChambeau, who just started up his day. He's not any different than he was when we chatted about him. Scotty Scheffler, still the favorite to win it all. He's at six under. He tees off at 148. Then a bunch of guys at five, four, three, so on and so forth behind those guys. But Max Homa playing really well right now. Yeah, balling out and uh, an opportunity for him to be able to do some damage. Three Americans atop uh, the leaderboard there. Going into the second day, well, yeah, of course, we had to finish up the first round, but it was Bryson DeChambeau and then a couple of guys. Um, I, I wanted to look in, and see how many of the live guys uh, were going to make the cut and kind of break it all down. So DeChambeau, after round one, minus seven. Joaquin Neiman, two under, and then Cam Smith, one under. The other 10 guys were even par or worse. Hatton, Garcia, Kepka, Mickelson, Ron, Watson, Reed, Schwartzel, Johnson, and Maronk. So you look at that, Zach. The top guys, let's just take DeChambeau out of it. Everybody else was a plus 18. And you have to wonder, is it going to get better or is it going to get worse? These guys haven't played 72 holes. So you combine the awkward starts and you look at Dustin Johnson, who finished the first round at six over, it's not going to get easier for some of these guys. You, you would have to think it's it's only going to get worse. And Moronk, he was a plus six. He was six over yesterday. He's seven over today. 13 over total. Dustin Johnson, six over yesterday, or six under round one, two under today. So there are some big names at the bottom of the leaderboard as well, with Jordan Spieth having another rough outing, Sam Burns as well, Peter Malnati, uh, who won the Valspar, Brian Harmon, who I think some people thought was made have been a tricky... Did you have him as one of your picks? In one of my pulls, ah. yeah. Punt him to the moon. He was like nine over the last time I looked. He was he's, having an, yeah, he's an ten over. awful day. He's 10 over now. Awful day. It's uh, tough, man. Of course, the greens are crazy right now. Yeah. It, it, it's just tough to tell what's going to happen. I, I mean, yesterday you get the delay, and then after that, guys come out, and it seems like it's, it's in great shape for them right after the storm. Mm-hmm. But then it gets windy as hell for a couple hours. But then the late guys seem like they're having a much calmer you know, outing into the evening. So then those guys come out this morning and all the thought process that I heard from the broadcasters out there was they're going to have an advantage finishing the round right now because it's nice out. And those guys, minus Max Homo, were struggling. Um, and then it seems like it's calmed down now and you're starting to see some guys shoot well again. Augusta, it's just, it's unlike anything else. <laughs> it, it, it's hard to kind of pinpoint what's going to go right or what's going to go wrong. Even the best in the world, the people that follow this game the closest, are all over the place with what yeah. they're expecting and what's happening out there. And we're not even, you know, halfway through day two. So it's been every bit as advertised. And I know that, you know, it's only him kind of, you mentioned the live guys, but to have a Bryson DeChambeau from the live tour representative, at least to have one of them towards the top. It, it, Max Holm is a very big fan favorite. Scotty Scheffler is the favorite. Like for those to be the three guys at the top of your leaderboard right now, outside of Tiger Woods being on top, that's about as good as you could hope if you're the tour. And you mentioned Tiger Woods. I, I, I don't know if it was Pat or Aaron. Somebody put out yesterday that they're cheering harder for him to make the cut Pat. than they uh, 
cheered for him to win tournaments in his heyday. And I don't know if I disagree with that. I, I, I want Tiger Woods playing every single day. He is a needle mover still at this age. He is a huge reason why people are tuning in. Yeah, it's the Masters. It's it's one of the most venerable tournaments uh, in any sport, right? There is just nothing yeah. like it. The, the venue doesn't change. It's always at Augusta. Uh, to be able to get in there and to be able to watch it, even just a glimpse of it, to be on the grounds there, has got to. It's a bucket list item for me. I want my. I want to take my dad. That's something real important to me. But Tiger Woods, there's just something about him still being able to play, and he's obviously got an uphill climb, being having to finish his first round today and then having to play the second round. But Zach, it's just I'm gonna miss it when there's no Tiger. I really am. He he just puts so many different eyeballs to the sports and to the sport. And if you heard our interview with Bob Herrick, go get his book. Go on Amazon. Just type in Bob Herrick. You get his Tiger and Phil book and the Drive, the Tiger book. Um, but there's only so many of these left, right? Yeah. No. I I mean, look, I still cherish a few years ago when he was at the Vals Bar, being able to walk Man. up and down with him. Like, there's never a year that'll pass where we're heading to Innisbrook and we don't mention. <laughs> Remember the year Tiger was here? Yeah. Um. And for me, though, I, I do look at it, and not to – I don't disagree with the needle-moving aspect of it and, and what he means to the sport still, even as non, not one of their top guys anymore and with all the other things that have happened in golf, the evolution of it. But for me, it's like I, I don't know what Pat wasn't rooting for when it came to Tiger growing up because for me, I watched more tournaments than I can remember next to my dad rooting for Tiger, mm -hmm. especially on Sundays in the red. So – I, I wouldn't say I'm rooting harder for him now than I was then because I was rooting for him hard the whole time. Yeah. And like you said, I think now it's more of a novelty. I just want to see him make the cut. If for whatever reason, like in 2019, he ends up being in contention and actually being able to maybe win one of these things, even better. Mm -hmm. But I see that as a dessert at this point. Like, I'm not expecting that. So if I get it at the end of watching one of these majors, awesome. Even better than anything else I could ask for. But I'm not necessarily rooting for him to win. I'm hoping he makes the cut and hoping he's competitive. But I want to be realistic in it. I don't know if I'll ever root for him harder than when he was dominating the field for tournament after tournament, year after year. I don't think I'm rooting for him harder now because I rooted for him so hard growing up. He's one of the reasons I love golf. He's mm -hmm. one of the big parts of me and my father's relationship. So I wouldn't say I'm rooting for him harder now, but that's okay. That's that's an opinion. I get it. Yeah, and, and I'm on the other side. I agree with Pat because yeah. I feel like we heard Bob Herrick say it the other day. It was Tiger against the field. Regardless of if you watched or not, he was out there balling out and he was probably going to be in the final group. Now we don't know, right? There's only so many of these left. And you take it for granted in the middle of when he's dominating everybody. And people were wondering if he was going to catch Jack Nicholas. Nobody was worried about Tiger making the cut. People were wondering if how many he was going to win in a row and that Tiger slam. Now it's like, how many tournaments does he really have left? How many times is he going to be able to walk four rounds could this? You never know. This could be the last time he plays the Masters. We, I hate to say that, but I, I'm pulling for him, man. I just, I think it's, I th just think it's so great that he's still out there, and everybody is more tuned in. Maybe not the guys that are diehards, but you want to no, talk about the casuals, right? right? Still, more, he even is, the diehards, people <clears throat> in general watching golf, Jay. Whether he's competitive, whether he makes the cut, whatever you want to put on top of it, especially when it comes to the majors, don't get it twisted. We'll look at the top of the leaderboard, and then we're trying to find Tiger. Exactly. I don't care who you are. And if I may bring up another quote, not to kind of go on Pat and Aaron a lot today, but they do an okay show in the morning. We like to listen to them on the way in, podcasts. Hey, we show love to the other shows. No doubt. No doubt. We They kind of take shots at us, but yeah, we'll, okay. you know, we'll show some love. That being said, Aaron is probably as diehard of a golf fan as we have in this building. Mm -hmm. So for him to come out with a tweet and a quote, and he did it himself and shared it, saying that – Scotty Scheffler is creeping into the same type of dominance that we saw from Tiger could not be more false could not be a less true statement story idea and I fell for this trap with Jordan Spieth a few years mm -hmm. ago Jordan Spieth who by the way is having an awful weekend at, week at Augusta when we started the show he looked like he was going to throw his club he has not been good at Augusta since he lost after winning back to back mm -hmm. Jordan and, and he the only reason Danny Willett won the year that he won is because Jordan screwed up but I digress as I love to do. There is not going to be, we can't tr keep trying to push these guys into being Tiger. We thought Jordan Spieth was going to be dominant. We thought Rory before him was going to be dominant. We've thought since guys like Dustin Johnson, who went on a little bit of a run. Kepka. Brooks Kepka, who went on a run. Now it's Scotty Scheffler. He's the sexy name. Everybody's like, oh, he's the best golfer in the world right now. He is the favorite for a reason. He's played a great first round. We'll see what he does today. I, I put Cheddar on him. 
to act like he's even creeping, even to use that phrasing into whatever level of dominance that we put Tiger at. They couldn't be more than universes apart. I need domin the type of domination we saw from Tiger. We haven't even seen anybody come close on tour. And we're hopeful that one of these guys turns into that. But that's not fair to, to what Tiger's already accomplished to say that even a guy like Scotty Scheffler is creeping in any capacity. I wonder if fans of Jack Nicholas thought the same thing about Tiger Woods. Right? Yeah. Uh, early, on, maybe, us, maybe right? early on. Maybe before us. Maybe early on. Maybe early on. I don't right? remember that because I, I was so young. Yeah, I was just enjoying what I was watching. But I also wonder, I don't I don't necessarily agree with that exact comment. I think if it was phrased differently, I might agree with it, though. I think you could say Scotty Scheffler's been the most dominant golfer over a period of time since Tiger had his era of dominance. I don't even think that's true per but se, I, though. We just when, talked about what Spieth did in those two years. Yeah, but when you talk Kepka. about FedEx Player of the Year and multiple majors and the way that he's been able to sustain that, Jordan Spieth didn't have that level of, of success. I gotta Kepka's go back and look. More up Spieth, and down. Spieth and Kepka had some pretty good runs there. Kepka was more with the majors. I'm talking about yeah. over the last couple of years, consistently at the top of the leaderboard. I would say, and we, we'd have to look into it, but I think Scotty Scheffler, since Tiger, I'm not comparing him to him, yeah. but I'm saying since Tiger had his run. You're saying to run, the field of guys outside of Tiger oh, since Oh, of Tiger. course. Since yeah. since Tiger went on his run, who's had the, the longest sustained success? It, it, I think it could be Scotty Scheffler. It could be. So that's the part of it. Yeah. It could be. I, again, a lot of these guys, we've been at the could be level, and then they've kind of started to split it with the rest mm -hmm. of the guys. And there's been new guys coming up. You get a Colin Morikawa every once in a while, one a major, right? You get some of the old guys step up their game. So it's the could be. Yeah, like Scotty's, look, he's in the mix of that chat and he's at the top of the list right now. But to make that jump from the could be to the Tiger, yeah. even even to get in the, look, Tiger's in the penthouse. To even get into the hotel, okay, well, Scotty's in the lobby with all these guys. You got to get on the elevator to start going up levels to the Tiger penthouse. Like, that's massively hard to do. And we've seen guys not be able to do it since Tiger. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily buying that. But I, I I understand the want for another Tiger or the want for somebody to at least be somewhat comparable to him because Tiger even now as a non-factor you know, a non -factor in this tournament is still the guy we're watching the most. Tells you everything you need to know, not just when it comes to golf, but when it comes to the Masters. We'll give you another look in at Augusta at 2.30 today as the leaderboard shakes up and some of these guys continue to tee off. We're going to head to baseball next. The Rays off yesterday. They'll be back in action tonight against San Francisco starting a series. But some big news with Shohei Otani and some other great games slash series going on yesterday. Boston in the Orioles, Houston in the Royals. All of that next here on Jane's Act. Stay right here. This is Tampa Bay Sports Radio. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Home of the best bolts coverage. Ronnie Lane here, joined by the MVP of the Holland Group Retirement Wealth Advisors, co-founder and president, Elizabeth Holland. The one thing I love most about football is the team effort it takes to win a game. All phases of the team have to work together and be at their very best to get the job done. That's what your team at the Holland Group does every day, right? Your team of advisors, led by Steve and you, puts together comprehensive retirement plans designed to preserve and grow assets while applying tax advantage strategies to make sure your clients keep every single cent they are legally entitled to. That's what I call a win. That's exactly right. And unlike most other financial firms, we do it all under one roof. This is where the Holland Group becomes your X factor and we can design a customized inflation adjusted and tax advantage retirement plan. Nobody wins by sitting on the bench. So call the Hollands at 727-469-7939 or visit askthehollands.com. Let's make the rest of your life the best of your life. Opening up your home to showings, that means strangers, they can open anything. You don't have to worry about getting around to spring cleaning. Sell your home with a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain Real Estate and skip the cleaning and organizing necessary to sell your home. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson and say goodbye to the stress that comes with a traditional home sale. With a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain's Real Estate, you can receive an all-cash offer and close within days. No showings, no open houses, no costly repairs. Mark Spain Real Estate 
rate makes selling your home stress-free. Take it from one of their clients, Chris, who said Mark Spain Real Estate's guaranteed offer that allowed us to sell our 16-year-old home without having to spend thousands on repairs. The guaranteed offer was more than we were hoping for, and the whole process was fast. And that's what you're going to get with over 11,000 five-star reviews. Mark Spain Real Estate, they're the most trusted and experienced real estate team in the U.S. Go to MarkSpain.com and find out what your guaranteed offer will be today. No obligation. MarkSpain.com. Get the guaranteed offer on your home and start packing. Guys, your perfect closet starts with the right finishing touches. And right now, during the light and accessory event at California Closets, every $1,500 of design lighting and accessories you buy earns you $500 toward your custom design. Garage, office, bedroom. California Closets will give you the space that's fresh, styled, and expertly organized. To get started, visit one of their three conveniently located showrooms or visit California Closets Tampa Bay com to book your free design consultation today. Tell them T-Crash sent you. I'm Mark Anajar. I'm Glenn Levine. I'm Ellie Anajar. Together, we're Anajar and Levine, and our team is a triple threat to big insurance companies. Don't settle with the insurance companies for a fraction of what your case is worth. We'll fight to get you the maximum compensation you deserve. That's the Anajar and Levine difference. Get your free case review right now. We'll help you take back control of your life. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Main office, Tampa. At Progressive, we know money can't buy you happiness, but money did help you buy an RV, which means an excuse from working Saturday with your insufferable coworker, Dave. So money is helping you listen to birds chirp instead of Dave chirping about how his toddler is fluent in three languages. And it's also why you'll be smelling pine trees in the air, not Dave's tuna melt reheating in a microwave. So save money by bundling your RV or boat insurance with home or auto from Progressive and buy more happiness or something close to it. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. Live it up at the Downs, and it's almost Kentucky Derby Day 2024 at Tampa Bay Downs. Make sure to get your tickets online today at tampabaydowns.com. If you can't be at Churchill Downs, the Oldsmar Oval is the place to experience the most exciting two minutes in sports. Tampa Bay Downs offers an exciting live racing card, followed by the simulcast of the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby, presented by Woodford Reserve. Mint juleps will be sold in the official souvenir derby glass. Louisville has the race, but Tampa Bay Downs has one heck of a party. The iHeartMedia team is growing, and we're looking for experienced salespeople to join our team. If you're interested in working in a fast-paced environment and representing the biggest brands in media, go to iHeartMediaCareers.com and type Tampa. iHeartMedia is an equal opportunity employer, and you may be the next rock star seller for our team. Go to iHeartMediaCareers.com and type Tampa and apply today. Dealing with your gutters is a swing and a miss. Let the Rhino Gutter Experts pinch hit for you. Schedule now and you can get a $300 discount on services. Plus, the Rhino offers military and senior discounts. So don't wait. Go to the Rhino.com and schedule services today. The Rhino, hitting home runs all day. Good Greek, moving in so rich. The superhero movers. Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios. We are Tampa Bay's home for sports and Rays fans around the globe. Over 20 years and counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. Welcome back, Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM620. Rays back in action tonight against the San Fran Giants. That's what our guy James Berlander calls them. So I'm going to call them the San Fran Giants as well. Inside pitch with Ronnie Lane, 530. Second portion of the pregame show with Chris Adams Wall at 6. First pitch, 650. Rays and Gigantes. Cannot wait for that. Um... Yeah, I mean, the Rays, a uh, well-deserved day off yesterday, Zach, after going 4-2 uh, and two on the road trip. That's what you wanted to see, Mr. Blobner, and that's what you got. It is. Uh, you know, again, I think they're going to kind of do this up-and-down situation with their win-loss record and, until they're really healthy and find somewhat of a groove. Uh, Best-case scenario, you know, as we move into the end of May and in the summertime. But you got to at least keep fighting to be in the picture, to at least have that conversation still apply. So... Uh, a big series. Every series is this one against San Francisco coming to town. Fortunately for the Rays, on the other side of whatever happens in these next three, a lot of cool things happening at the ballpark too. If you missed it, we posted online at J and Z. Right, <laughs> uh, there it is at J and Zach. Ah, there he goes. You can go check it out. Um, 
But really cool weekend. They got Randy Land happening tonight, and they're doing like a pickleball pre-party. You can get pickleball paddles. Uh, Saturday, they're doing the Autism Awareness Day promotion. They've also got Greek Heritage Day. And then Sunday, they're honoring the late, great Dave Wills into the Rays Hall of Fame, one of the two going into the class this season. And they'll, uh, as always, on Sunday, let the kids run the bases after the game. So a lot of fun stuff happening at the ballpark with your Rays. But regardless of what happens against San Francisco, you then get the Angels here for four games. And that's a team that, you know, look, they're better than now, mm-hmm. are they take care of business? Got to take care of business, and they did it. So regardless, mm-hmm. you know, you can't. I, you never want to be swept. Hopefully, that doesn't happen again. I'm managing my expectations pretty strongly. I think, uh, in terms of what's reality and what could happen, don't get swept by San Francisco. That's all I ask. So it's not hard. That's not hard. You just want one. <laughs> want one, and then you take three out of four against LA. He gonna do one. And what's that put him at? Three out of four against LA. Yeah. One and two against San Fran. That puts him at four and three. Yeah. So four and three, four and two. You just keep riding that way. You just want to go four and three every time. Four and three, three and two. And then again, you be you, right around 500. You survive until you get in, until you start getting guys back. Josh Lowe, Taj Bradley, Johnny Aranda, we think might be back soon. And then if you can kind of stay within striking distance and continue to battle a little bit this summer, we can say, who knows? That's, I mean, sometimes it's not a bad thing. If you're reliant on like, when we try to project, we try to talk up or talk down. Sometimes you just want to get to a situation where all things are counted against you and you're able to still say, hey, but we're in it. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And that's how I feel about the Rays this season. And it is, you know, I'm not going to sit here and put them in the World Series. I'm not even going to put them in the playoffs right now, although I did in our projections at the beginning of the year. But I, for them, I just want them to be in the like, hey, we'll see what happens at, at the very worst by the summertime. Yeah, and you, you're looking at how the division is starting to shake out now. The Baltimore Orioles go into Boston and pick up a three-game sweep over the Red Sox. They're now 8-4 and four in the division. Boston at 7-6. and six. The Yankees had the day off. They're 10-3 uh, and three as they head to Cleveland to take on the Guardians tonight, who are 9-3 and three themselves. So Toronto hosting the Colorado Rockies. They're at 6-7. and seven. So, you know, the AL East, it's probably going to be... I, don't, I I wouldn't be surprised if all five teams are are <laughs> over playoffs, 500. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> but over 500. You look at a team like the Houston Astros. My goodness. We thought that they had something to be worried about after they got swept by the Yankees. They just got swept by the Royals, and they're 4-10. and 10. Watch out for the Royals, 9-4. and four. You want to talk about a sneaky MVP candidate, Bobby Witt Jr. That would – watch out for the Royals. But Houston, man – Four and ten. Hunter Brown, who they had a lot of hope for going into the season, picks up the loss. Brady Singer, former Gator, picks up the win. He's two and zero with a point nine eight ERA. Hunter Brown, zero and two with a sixteen ERA. Who saw that coming? Yeah, it's it's wild. Um, Houston, a very slow start last year to the season as well. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I I actually was more critical of them than you last season. And you were like, just be patient, just be patient. So I'm going to apply that now too because they've been there, they've done that, they got a lot of core pieces. Um, not the greatest start, but again, this is a squad that came on late and ultimately was uh, as good as anybody in the American League, not named the Texas Rangers, that they you know faced ironically or unironically into the postseason. So. I'm not freaking out about Houston. I, I think it's more about the Royals hot start when it comes to that. Uh, and then on the flip side, again, we've talked about Boston going back down in the series you just mentioned. Baltimore sweeping them. They just called Jackson Holiday up. Watch out because uh, I think the O's are going to start to really put their pedal to the metal here. And we'll see if the Yankees can kind of keep their spot atop the AL East. I, I think the other three teams will kind of bounce up and down and around when it comes to the Rays, Red Sox, and Jays. But yeah, it's, it's baseball season's been good. It's been a lot of fun, and it almost makes you forget that at the beginning of it all, they were in Korea, and Otani was getting hammered with this gambling BS. Yeah, and now we're hearing more of this news, and I'm just real quick. Who would have thought that there's more teams in the AL Central over 500 than the AL West Crazy. and the NL West combined? Crazy. That is nuts. But, yeah, more news when it looks like uh, Shohei Otani's ex-interpreter, Ife Mitsuhara, stole $16 million. Do I think that he's covering for Shohei Otani? No. But do I think that Shohei Otani had no idea what was going on? Also, no. He had to have some kind of inkling, whether he was trying to be a good friend, whether he was just trying to help a guy out, but there's no way you're moving this type of money and making bets in the in the hundreds of thousands and you have no idea what's going on. That, like that's just that's come on, man. I mean, I was born during the day, but it wasn't yesterday. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't want to fully detach him from it. I thought he was going to be more involved about a month ago or whenever all this started to break out. Now I've kind of uh, calmed down on that a little bit, hearing his interpreter's conversations with bookies becoming public and how he turned off the alerts on Otani's, like, banks so that Otani didn't get the, the, the notifications. Hey, there's millions of dollars leaving your account. Now, you could say even if you're not getting alerts, you would notice millions of dollars leaving your account. But I don't know how that plays with the language barrier, with him getting acclimated in the States, you know, versus what he was used to uh, in his own country. So I think it's murky. I, I think he has less to do it now, Otani, that is, than I originally expected. But it's impossible to completely detach him from it and say he was clueless um, because it's just a massive amount of money being moved. Yeah, you're either you either enabled him and you're helping him cover this up. Or you're probably one of the more naive people that we've heard of in sports in recent history. Which he might be. I, I, he okay. might be. I don't know if that makes it any better. I mean, it's not my money, so what do I care? <laughs> yeah. But still, uh, the fact that you let something like that happen under your own nose, like that's, to me, you got to have some sense of self-awareness and what's going on. What happens to the money, though? Because if he gambled it away, like... The interpreter doesn't have that money to give you back. The bookies, I can tell you from experience, aren't giving that money back. That guy's just chilling back here. He's like, no, nah, <laughs> like, who is it? No, nah, it wasn't me. Like, Otani just has to eat that lack of money, right? Like, he just, that's lost. Yeah. He might not have gambled it, but he gambled it. He sure did. Yeah, he he didn't gamble. He just lost it. That was it. <laughs> oh, uh, trust crazy. me, man. If you're going to lose, at least lose it on your own account. <sighs> we know that guy's not going to return. But what about... Tom Brady. Is he talking return again? Oh, We're getting back here. Man. We're getting back into this. Hey, he, go. Ke he keeps bringing it up. We got to discuss it. And Aaron Bronstetter from Sportsnet previewing UFC 300. We'll talk Brady. We'll talk UFC when we return. Don't go anywhere. It's Jane Zach. Box fans, are you geared up for an exciting draft weekend where every pick counts? Who will they choose? Where will they trade? Will they trade out, down, or up? It's the NFL's primetime reality show. As we count down to the draft, stay locked in with the latest news, rumor, and potential surprises right here. This is 95.3 WDAE and AM620, home of the best box coverage. Streaming live on the free iHeartRadio app. WDAE traffic update. We have two big crashes on either side of the bay. St. Petersburg has two lanes blocked at 34th Street South after 54th Avenue South. And in Hillsborough County, 275 South down before Hillsborough did have two left lanes blocked. Now we're just down to one left lane and the shoulder blocked. But that traffic is now backed up approaching Fowler Avenue. Also, I-4 westbound between the Selma Connector and 275. With traffic, I'm Pat Largo. This report is sponsored by Train Heating and Cooling Systems. Train Heating and Cooling Systems are tested, retested, engineered, and re-engineered to keep up with you. They run together. Visit traininfo.com to find your local independent train dealer. Traininfo.com. It's hard to stop a train. Hey, it's Sean Kelly, voice of the Gators for my friends at International Diamond Center. IDC is Florida's family-owned jeweler with worldwide connections. IDC delivers exceptional value, mind-blowing selection, uncompromising quality, ironclad warranties. IDC has showrooms all over Gator Country, Gainesville, Orlando, Tampa, Clearwater, Sarasota, Naples, and on the Treasure Coast. The vibe at IDC is relaxed and fun. Their non-commissioned experts will guide you every step of the way, and nobody can touch their incredible value prices. Of course, IDC's specialty is diamonds. Real, rare, precious GIA-certified diamonds in every shape and size imaginable. It's a massive selection at no middleman, direct importer prices. So when it comes to those special moments in your life, celebrate with the only jeweler endorsed by the Gators, International Diamond Center, where Gator Nation shops for jewelry. Get store locations, hours, and learn more. ShopIDC.com. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Last year, over 3 million people called Morgan & Morgan in their time of need. And with over a million of those calls coming from previous clients, friends, and family. My name is Rita Fowler. I was in the car actually relaxing. I was talking to my sister, and all of a sudden, boom, the car hit us. I wound up actually having a stroke. And that's when I decided to call Morgan & Morgan. The whole operation, everything they did from day one, it was self-explanatory. It was text messages. It was emails. It was a no-brainer. When you think that hiring a lawyer is hard, you haven't called Morgan & Morgan. Thank you for trusting us. We've become the largest injury firm in the world because we've won a lot. The word is out. 
Size matters. Reputation matters. We're America's largest injury law firm for a reason. With over 900 dedicated attorneys and climbing, we're ready wherever you are, whatever you need. The choice is easy. We're just a phone call away. Injured? Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Plumbing, HVAC, and electrical contractors on Service Titan put up big numbers. How big? In their first two years on Service Titan, contractors typically see a 10% increase in call booking rates, a 9% increase in average ticket size, and a 17% increase in revenue. They also average a 4.7 out of 5 stars on customer review sites. Add it all up and the answer is clear. When solving for profitability, productivity, and growth, Service Titan is an essential part of the equation for contractors like you. Learn more today at ServiceTitan.com. That's ServiceTitan.com. Individual results may vary. Opening your home to showings means strangers can open anything. Don't worry about getting around to spring cleaning. Sell your home with a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain Real Estate and skip the cleaning and organizing necessary to sell your home. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson. Say goodbye to the stress that comes with a traditional home sale. With a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain's Real Estate, you can receive an all-cash offer and close within days. No showings, no open houses, no costly repairs. Mark Spain Real Estate makes selling your home stress-free. Check them out, MarkSpain.com for the guaranteed offer. No obligation. That's MarkSpain.com and start packing. Bet Online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season. With Major League Baseball, golf, pro basketball, and hockey playoffs, stats, news, and scores are right at your fingertips. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today from your desktop or mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online, where the game starts. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. For over 35 years, we've grown by offering our clients more, more offices, more lawyers, and recovering more than $20 billion. Injured? The choice is easy. Morgan & Morgan. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. I'm Mark Anajar. I'm Glenn Levine. I'm Ellie Anajar. And we're Anajar and Levine. Experience the Anajar and Levine difference by calling us with any of your legal needs. Call 1-800-747-FREE for a free consultation and take back control of your life. Main office, Tampa. Dealing with your gutters is a swing and a miss. Let the Rhino Gutter Experts pinch hit for you. Schedule now and you can get a $300 discount on services. Plus, the Rhino offers military and senior discounts. So don't wait. Go to therhino.com and schedule services today. The Rhino, hitting home runs all day. Hi, this is Earl Ron. New South makes windows that are both energy efficient and hurricane resistant. New South is the factory and eliminates the middleman. New South windows are made in Florida. For Florida homes, buy Florida workers because we know Florida weather. Going on now, save 35% off factory direct windows and doors. Call 1-800-NEW-WINDOWS. The Bush Gardens Tampa Bay Food and Wine Festival is back every weekend and now through May 19th with over 75 different culinary delights to sip and savor. Plus, free concerts like Hoobastank this weekend. Save on tickets, fun cards, and annual passes at bushgardenstampa.com. When something happens to your car, you might say, Well, that's just great. Oh, perfect. Awesome. How nice for me. But what you really need to say is, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there to help you file your claim. State Farm, Bloomington, Illinois. Bosch Tools is the proud sponsor of the 7th Inning Stretch during every Rays radio broadcast. Engineered for efficiency, comfort, and ease, Bosch Tools are built to keep workers feeling productive and off the injured list. Bosch Tools, what hard workers deserve. Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors. Visit TrajanWealth.com. Have you downloaded the free iHeartRadio app yet? Just think you could take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all on one app. Free never, never sounded, sounded so, so good. good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. Broadcasting from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios. The reigning, defending, and undisputed home of Tampa Bay Sports Talk for over 20 years. We are 95.3 FM W237CW Pendellas Park. 95.7 HD3 WBTP Clearwater. 96.7 FM W224B Brent. And the, and the mighty, mighty 620, 620 WDAE St. Petersburg. Streaming live right now on your free iHeartRadio app. All your sports, music, talk, and podcasts. Hey, hey, hey Tampa, Tampa Bay. Bay. Free has never sounded so good. I really want to get back into this. <clears throat> into what? I really didn't want to fall for it. I didn't want to take the bait. 
I really didn't want to have to write this on the show sheet ever again. I just wanted to put it in the past and wait to talk about him again when he went to Canton. But we're talking about it again. Tom Brady and a comeback. <laughs> oh, Zach, did you think we were over it or did you think that this was going to happen? Oh, no, we're definitely not over it. When As long as he's still, let me tell you all, 10 years from now, how old is he going to be? He's going to be like 50-something. Mm-hmm. Guess what? He's still going to be he's like... He's 46 now. In 10 years, when he's 56, a decade from now, there will be a clip circulating from Tom Brady saying, I think I could still play. In nine years, there will be one of those. In eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one right now. He understands the media game. And he knows that it's going to remain relevant. He is going to remain relevant in the NFL in terms of... He'll always be relevant because he's the GOAT. But in terms of current day players and what's happening in the league as long as he drops breadcrumbs every once in a while like this. So am I surprised? No. Am I ever going to be surprised? No. Do I ever think it'll go away? No. Do I believe him? No. This is Tom Brady on with uh, on Deep Cut with Vic Blends. Uh, Vic Blends, a, a very popular barber. We actually saw Vic Blends. I'm glad you did last because I was going to text you and ask you if he was the same guy. Yeah, same guy. Vic okay. Blends actually cut the hair of Wayne Peacock, the mm-hmm. CEO of USAA. We saw Vic Blends doing his thing. It was outside. And it was cold last year. Shout out to Wayne Peacock, USAA. Last year when we were in Philadelphia, getting his hair cut by Vic Blends and. Uh, Vic is a guy that, like, he has these in-depth conversations as he's cutting people's hair. And Tom Brady was the latest guy in the chair. Uh, let's hear how this conversation went. One day there's a situation, right? Maybe it's the 49ers. Maybe, you know, heading to the playoffs. Offense is great. Patriots. Somebody, could be somebody, somebody. Raiders look, could be. Not Bucks, never huh? know. So God forbid somebody goes down. Would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're going to let me if I become an owner in the NFL team. But I don't know if... Uh, I don't know. I'm always going to be in good shape. Always be able to throw the ball. So to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back, um, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Tom. Thomas. Because he knows that's going to make headlines. If he says no, then we're not having this conversation. Exactly. He gets Um, it. And Jordan came back for two years with the Washington Wizards, okay? And he played 82 games his last season in the nation's capital. So, uh (laughs) He just, he loves manipulating the game, man. He loves staying in the conversation, and that's Tom Brady for you. He's like, I, I, I'm always going to be in good shape. I'm always going to be able to play. But I, f- I noticed some, you know, some salt and pepper, some grays there on the on the, uh, on the the edges. So He brought uh, this city a Lombardi. He can say whatever the hell he wants. I agree with you. We don't have to believe it. We don't even have to like it. But in terms of, like, being, you know, I don't want to poo-poo it too much because we're, we're lucky that he came through here. You should have mentioned the Bucks though on that list, just for what it's worth. Yeah, I heard you in this. Eclipse. I was like, "Come on, man, the Bucks." Yeah, but what the situation last year with San Francisco? San Francisco lost all those quarterbacks. They lost to Philadelphia. Then the Eagles ended up going to the Super Bowl well, two years ago. Now, mm-hmm. you had to wonder if a similar situation happened this year. Would he entertain that thought? So you you don't think there's any validity to this at all? A team like San Francisco, let's say they lose their two quarterbacks in. Let's say Purdy goes down in week 10, in week 11, the backup goes down in week 15, and they're scrambling. They're looking for somebody. You think there's an opportunity for Brady to come back there? I don't think so. I mean, I I get it. Never say never. You never close the door. He's the GOAT. You're telling me, you're asking me if I think there's even a, you know, 1% chance. Like, sure, just because I don't want to <laughs> kick myself if I miss. But I would I, I would be beyond shocked. I would never bet on it. Um I just, it's just not plausible to me at this point. This is a guy. I, here's the thing: if he was going to come back, I think he'd be gearing up for a comeback. Mm-hmm. I don't. Everybody talks about these scenarios, right? Like, well, what if this happens, or what if that happens? And you know, you give specific teams that we've heard that he's tied to the ownership stuff with the Raiders. You know, the growing up as a San Fran fan, like his time in New England. So we look at all these things, and we're like, what if? What if? For me, again, I don't believe it. But if I were to paint a picture that he returns he would be gearing up the entire offseason for it. He wouldn't just show up in uh, December and be like, all right, let's figure this out. So you think if he came back, it would be for the entire season? I think if he was going to return to the NFL in some capacity, he would be gearing up for it right now. 
But he's saying there that it's only going to be like in a pinch hit type of thing. Yeah, like I don't. I, I don't believe that. I think he would. You just mentioned Jordan coming mm-hmm. back and playing for the Wizards and playing. Yeah, but that's a different. Games. He didn't say that. He didn't say. No, Brady I know. Said. I'm. I'm just. That's the scenario I see with a guy like him. He's not a pinch hitter type of guy. He's. He breathes, lives, eats, sleeps football. True. Or did for 20 plus But he years. also, you know, that one spring training ended up going to take a vacation with his family. So there is things that change. And I wonder when he says, all right, coming in at the end of the season, I often think about some of these veteran players that kind of skip training camp. And uh, I know it's a, a lot different because once you get into the rigors of the season, you're playing a full 17 game schedule. But I'm just, I understand what you said about plausibility. I'm thinking about possibility, right? Let's say the scenario does happen. It's one thing to be in shape. It's another thing to be in football shape. Mm -hmm. If anybody's going to be able to try to do it, I think he would try. Would he be successful? That could be two different questions. What if what if he goes out there and leads the team to like a long postseason run and like let's say they lose in the NFC Championship game, but he won a couple of games? Then what? You just hang him up again? He's probably like, damn. Ah, just wait. It's but I. I want it to happen. I want something like this to happen. Oh, we just talked about Tiger and what he draws, even though he's not going to win exactly. the Masters. Brady would do the same thing in the league, even if he was 50, and we're like, this guy's not going to win it. You could argue Bowl. he's the best quarterback on the Raiders right now, okay? <laughs> you could argue that. You could, you could argue that. They have to make a move somewhere. They're going to trade. They got to go get a quarterback. You have Devontae Adams out there. You better put him with an established quarterback, or you're going to be in trouble. They got some good places pieces on the defense. You got a mm-hmm. brand new coach in Antonio Pierce. You got to make sure that you have a quarterback you're going to ride with. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're active at the deadline. Uh, excuse me, active uh, around draft day. You know what this did for me, Jay? Tom Brady, you know, throwing the breadcrumbs out there. You know what it did for me? It made me thankful that the Bucs have Baker Mayfield, and mm-hmm. we're not trying to figure out what the hell's going to happen. That was rough, wasn't it? I, I mean, in a given, you know, things change, as you mentioned, and— Certainly, I don't know if we'll be saying the same things about Baker next offseason or the offseason after that. But as we sit right here on April 12th in 2024, I'm thankful that we're Gucci. We're just rolling. We know it's him. And we don't have to have an offseason and a training camp. We're trying to no figure competition it out. either. No, no, off, no uh, training camp competition against Kyle Trask. Yeah, the only competition he's going to have is with his wife on who's changing the diapers each night as they uh, welcome their kid to town. Uh, we didn't get to this to the lighting segment, by the way, while I'm talking about Baker. There's mm-hmm. some bucks at Emily, right? Yes, Tristan Wirsch was there at the game last night, and uh, he actually just liked my tweet on Twitter. So shout out to you, Tristan, and congratulations on the new— Did you do anything cool there? I uh, drank it in Mick Ultra, so he didn't— It was pretty empty when he drank it. It was right? pretty empty, okay, yeah. I just wanted he to clarify. He didn't, like— Put it up to his face yeah. like he was going to pound it. He kind of yeah. knew, and he just took a swig. Uh, Richie Palacios was there as well from the Rays. Uh, so good to see both those guys in the house. And somebody tweeted it out. I forgot who it was. But it was a person that said, I've been all over the country, and I've never seen a city have the team support each other as much as the Lightning, the Bucks, the Rays, the Rowdies, the Bulls. Like, it it really is. It's like, he wasn't firing off the Tesla coils. Like, he was just there as a fan. It's <clears throat> watching the game. Richie Palacios, they got him in the middle of, of him eating. Like, it was so awkward. <laughs> Richie Palacios is eating. He, he didn't even know it was him. He looked up. He, like, holds his bowl of food up there. But, yeah, great to see Tristan and Richie out there. And, you know, unfortunately for them, they didn't see a win for the Tampa Bay Lightning. But even going back, I asked John Cooper this a couple of weeks ago when I saw him. I said, do you realize here in the Tampa Bay area, like, when you guys were going to win that second cup, you were getting video messages from Tom Brady. And Rob Gronkowski and Austin Meadows and Kevin Kiermaier. Like, Team Tampa Bay is is legit. It's not just some BS wannabe slogan of like, hey, we're, you know, this kumbaya. It's a, it's a way of life. You don't realize that unless you live here. But Team Tampa Bay is for real. And the support that the teams have for each other it, it is not something that is flimsy. It's not fugazi. It is 100%. Yes, and I love that we get to experience that every season, whether it's hockey, baseball, or football. Uh, Blessed to have the teams we have in town and the athletes. And Tampa Bay, man, it's a great place to be if you're a sports fan all around. Right, Jay? I'm so excited. Are you excited? I am always excited, more usually. I'm not always excited. What's wrong? I just made that up. (laughs) No, I just, you know, I'm not always excited. I'm pretty excited right now, though. Got a lot of cool things going on. In a big weekend of the Rays, taking yeah. on the, the Giants. We're going to talk about that more. Of course. The and Lightning kind of getting to the end of their season. and 
There's a lot going on right now. And UFC 300. All right, let's go to the Central Florida Behavioral Health Network DAE hotline and let's talk UFC 300. We'll do that with our guy Aaron Bronstetter here, courtesy of Bet Online. Check out Bet Online for the most up to date fight lines and props for UFC 300. Aaron, I used to rent the tapes at my local Pine Hollow video back in the day. I think I've seen the majority of the USC events, <laughs> uh, but I can't believe it's 300. It's pretty wild uh, that we're talking about it this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty amazing, and uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. I used to rent all those old tapes, also the old DVDs. Of the, uh, the the knockout collections eventually would come out. It's good times. I mean, it, you can't really replace the uh, the cachet of a video store, right? Where you browse around, you find what you're looking for, you have that chance. It's, it's not the same. The kids don't know what they're missing. Not even close, man. To be able to see Hoist Gracie back in the day wearing a gi and fighting guys three times his size and him being actually the guy winning that fight is something that really got, got me into the sport. But, uh, but I mean, it, I think one of the big things, too, is I know a lot of my friends and I are talking about this is kind of the lack of the, the big star at the top. Even though this is like a tremendous card going all the way down, there's no like Conor McGregor leading this one. There's no John Jones leading this one. What do you make of how the card was set up altogether? Yeah, you raise a really good point. You look at UFC 100 and 200 with Brock Lesnar, GSP on UFC 100. John Jones was supposed to be on UFC 200. We don't have to discuss how, why it went the way it did. But uh, looking at this card, you know, I was talking to my colleague, RJ Clifford, and he said it perfectly. He said, this is kind of a love letter to fight fans. 11% of the UFC's all-time champions are on this card. Top to bottom, it's just got tons of talent. You look at the, the amount of top 10 talent from uh, across the divisions that's on this card. You're just going to get a really large amount of high-level fights, really competitively matched fights for the most part. And I think that if you're into fighting and you're into the UFC, this is like a can't-miss event. But it's, it's one of those ones where the people that aren't really that into the UFC aren't really going to mark it on their calendar and say, like, I can't miss this, this thing I really need to see here. And I, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. Dana White still holds Sports Business Journal. They're looking to do over a million buys for this. So uh, still – some uh, big demand for this particular event. Aaron, and as we get to number 300 here, it's been a long road, like Jay just mentioned. You know, in your mind, being a fight fan and watching over the, the years, the decades now, what are some of the bigger moments you think help the sport get from 1 to 300? Well, the Ultimate Fighter is the first thing that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they had invested in the Ultimate Fighter, and if the Ultimate Fighter would have flopped, they might have ended up selling the UFC um, after they had kind of purchased it somewhat recently. You know, they were losing a lot of money and they, they poured a lot into that. And that final fight between Forrest Griffin and Stefan Bonner delivered for them. And a lot of people were watching. And not only were people watching, people were turning over to watch because the fight was just so exciting. Uh, I think that that's a pivotal moment for the UFC. Um, I think Conor McGregor's ascension was massive for the UFC and the way that he was, was running through all comers as a featherweight uh, to, to get to where he did and, you know, cross over into ma the mainstream. Uh, Ronda Rousey, I think, is uh, a really important part of the uh, UFC's history. What she was able to do, kind of a Mike Tyson effect, how quickly was she going to beat her next opponent? She was running mm -hmm. through them in seconds. Um, I, you know, I think that that was a, a big part of, of how the UFC's um, women's divisions rose to prominence and, and why women share cards with the men. Um, without anybody even really mentioning it. It's not like women's UFC. It's just, just the UFC. you got women and men on the same card. Uh, I think those are, are three that, that stand out to me as you know really pivotal uh, moments in the UFC's history. Sportsnet's Aaron Bronstetter joining us, previewing UFC 300, courtesy of Bet Online. And man, there's you. This is not one of those cards where you could just kind of like, uh, you know, tip dip your toe in the water. I mean, it's Davison Figueroa and Cody Garbrandt right off the rip. So I I don't know if that one's going uh, the distance. So you got to make sure you're paying attention early. Uh, Jim Miller, I think he might fight in UFC 400 or 500 too. I don't know if he's showing any signs <laughs> of slowing down. Uh, but I go to the prelims. And I look at Holly Holm and Kayla Harrison. You mentioned Ronda Rousey, uh, one of the biggest upsets we've ever seen in combat sports history when, you know, the kick heard around the world that broke the Internet, Holly Holm knocking her out there. Uh, and she goes against Kayla Harrison. I wasn't sure if she was ever going to get into the UFC, Aaron. Uh, but she comes over. She's su such a decorated background. What do you think her future is going to be like? Do you think she's going to be a champion? Because that you want to talk about styles make matchups. This is the ultimate kind of stand-up fighter against wrestler and arguably two of the best of all time. 
Yeah, I mean, you look at Kayla Harrison's pedigree as a two-time Olympic gold medalist in judo for the U.S., uh, you know, a, a country that historically has not been great in judo. Uh, you know, she's got that Olympic mentality, just uh, I, that, that championship medal that will, I think, take her to, to great heights in the UFC. And, I mean, right now is a great time. The women's bantamweight division has been kind of stagnant since Amanda Nunes retired. And, hey, if there's anything that's going to bring Amanda Nunes out of retirement, it's a, a matchup against her former teammate, Kayla Harrison, who, you know, if Kayla starts to run through the division, that might uh, awake the lion, so to speak. Um, just a really, really interesting matchup. And, hey, I mean, we saw what Holly Holmes did to a, a, a really highly pedigreed judoka in Ronda Rousey, and, you know, taking that freight train off the rail. Uh, I, I think that this is a really tough matchup for Kayla Harrison. And, I mean, we're going to find out uh, basically within the next hour whether or not she's able to make 135 oh, pounds. She had a lot of success in the PFL fighting at 155 pounds, right? And that, that's not an easy cut for somebody. Now, Aaron, one of the things we always point out is, like, Jay's a diehard fan. I'm a casual <laughs> fan. <laughs> Can we're, you tell? <laughs> we're both going to be watching 300 this weekend, though. And so what I would ask you from my seat is, like, for those of us listening – that are planning to watch this weekend. What are a couple things that like we just need to know as people that don't follow the sport all Good the question. time? Well, what you need to know really is just just buckle up and, and watch. I, <laughs> I think that you're, you're going to see so many high level fights that like, and the entertainment quotient I think is just going to be so high that uh, there's not really much you need to know going into this. I think that as you go along, they're going to tell you the story. Um, and I, I just think if, if you you're on the fence about watching it and you have you don't have plans Saturday night, and you're considering it. I would say just just go for it. Like if you're not somebody who's watched the sport um, much or or even at all over the years, I think that this card is so strong that you know if, if you if you turn it on, I, I think that, that there's a very very good chance that as long as you can make it through one minute of fighting, like I always say, it's kind of like a two-minute litmus test. Like if, if you can watch two minutes of, of MMA, there's a, there's a strong potential for you to be a fan of the sport for the rest of your life. But if you can't make it through that first two minutes, you know, that's, that's where uh, pe- people get turned off by it. it it's not for everybody. It, some, some people um, are unable to watch such a visceral sport. But at the same time, I think that if, if you can get through two minutes of it and you can enjoy it, you could be a fan for life. Aaron, before we let you go, I want to ask you this kind of two-part question. One, if there's one fight to watch tomorrow night, whether it's because it's the most entertaining or because it has the the most purposeful ramifications, what do you think it is? And also, there's always a big announcement when it comes to these big events. It's always like, we're going to do this. We're going to go here. What do you think the big announcement is going to be tonight or tomorrow night? Excuse me. Well, I'll I'll start off with... uh... Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway, oh, in my yeah. opinion, is like the can't miss fight on this card. I mean, it's not a fight that makes a whole lot of sense. You know, if you look at the divisions, Max Holloway is a top featherweight contender, Gaethje a top lightweight contender. The state, there's not really much at stake aside from this, this kind of token BMF championship, but this is a dream matchup. Like from a matchmaking standpoint, you've got two of the, the best action fighters, two of the most consistently exciting fighters that, that we've seen over the last 10 years go against each other. It's just like a kind of a can't miss matchup. And then, uh, Secondly, I mean, there's been a lot of rumblings about Conor McGregor coming back at the uh, the end of June. I think that uh, that's been something that people uh, are, are going to be very excited about, and that's something they could certainly announce on Saturday night. But, you know, one thing they might not announce on Saturday night that might be of interest to you and your audience is that the UFC might be coming to Tampa in early July at hey. the Amelie Arena. Just, just okay. saying, uh, they might not announce that tonight, but it's something that you might want to keep your eyes on if you uh, are living in in, uh, in Tampa or Clearwater or St. Petersburg or in that area. Just, 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 just putting it wow. out there. We love, love Aaron Broadstetter. Aaron and if you're man. in town, make sure you come check us in studio. And, of course, For sure. if that happens, we'll see you at the event at Amelie. Follow him on Twitter, slash X, at Aaron Broadstetter. Of course, here, courtesy of Bet Online, you can check him out on Sportsnet. Aaron, this has been a, a lot of fun, man. We appreciate it. Enjoy the fights on Saturday. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. What a great chat with him. And don't forget, betonline.ag. You can check out all the odds, not only for the UFC card this weekend, but all sports all the time, whether we're talking baseball, hockey, everything in between. They do a great job over there at betonline.ag. 
I'm excited. I'm excited. I didn't know we were getting that. I actually heard a, I actually heard some rumblings of that yesterday. You weren't expecting that answer when you asked the question? No, I was well, not. I'm blown away I thought right it was now. like a John Jones or a Conor McGregor thing. Yeah. I did see something yesterday about possible UFC event in Tampa. Let's go. Didn't know that date. And you know if there's a UFC event in Tampa, then my ass will be there. <laughs> and we'll definitely have some fighters on the That's program awesome. leading up to it. Okay, when we come back, the Campus Collective. What's going on in college hoops? A new coach there at Kentucky. And what about Alex Golish, USF? What does he have to do with ESPN and a look into the future? We'll tell you when we come back. Today, Tampa Bay Rays baseball is live on WDAE. Deep down the line to the corner. Home run. Don't miss any of the action as the Rays take on the San Francisco Giants. Coverage starts at 530. On the home of every Rays game all season long. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Streaming across Tampa Bay on the iHeartRadio app. WDAE. Traffic update. Minor crash in Hillsborough County, 75 southbound. The on-ramp from Fletcher Avenue has the left lane blocked with fire rescue on scene. Also a crash on 75 northbound. This is before mile marker 227 after Moccasin Wallow Road has the right shoulder block with an ambulance. Still working a crash in Hillsborough County, 275 southbound before Hillsborough Avenue blocking the left-hand lane with traffic. I'm Pat Largo. This report is sponsored by Tampa Machinery Auction. Tampa Machinery Auction is online in April. Saturday, April 13th, online bidding starts ending at 9 a.m. Rebidding starts Friday, April 12th afternoon. Live on-site inventory preview is Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Or visit tmauction.com for details. License AP135 and AU4650. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. Hey guys, T. Kraz here from my guys over at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader and the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. It's called regenerative medicine, guys. So if you're tired of those achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love doing, you got to call my guys over at QC Kinetics. I did. They fixed my elbow. They fixed my knee. They can do the same for you. No surgery, no steroids, no drugs. They are a thing of the past. Regenerative medicine is where it's at, and they can deliver lasting results. They can use your own body's biologics to restore and repair damaged joint tissue, and that's what QC Kinetics will do. So get your life back, guys. Call them. QC Kinetics. Get a free consultation. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you going again with no downtime. 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. QC Kinetics. Locations in Bradenton, Lakeland, St. Pete, and Brandon. Tell me your boy T. Crass sent you. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Hey guys, t Kraz here for my friends over at Pool Perfection, Tampa Bay's most trusted pool builder. The summer months are coming. Are you ready? Dive into the summer with Pool Perfection. They can build your pool in weeks, not months. They're Tampa Bay's most trusted pool builder. Tons of five-star Google reviews. And check out their beautiful new website, PoolPerfection.com. See their beautiful work for yourself. So if you're in the market for a new pool or a pool remodel, call my guys over at Pool Perfection, 727-518-POOL, 727-518-7665. Tell them t Crash said you. Pack your bags and stay close to the fun at Days Inn by Wyndham. Oh, I can't wait for our upcoming vacation. Me too. It's time to get away. Will you find us a hotel? Yeah. With comfy rooms. Oh, yeah. And free Wi-Fi. Uh-huh. Close to the action near all my favorite things, right? Right. Well, do you have an idea about where we can stay? I have 1,500 ideas. Seize the days at over 1,500 convenient Days Inn locations and earn Wyndham Rewards points on every stay. Days Inn, one of 24 trusted brands by Wyndham. Find your hotel at DaysInn.com. The five-star review. It's as important to contractors as it is to customers. 
Service Titan can help you earn more stars with innovative software features designed to give your customers the most convenient, most modern experience possible. Take it from the guys at Rainforest Plumbing and Air. Service Titan has enabled us to give each service call that personal touch. We love it because we know who our customers are when they call us, and we even know if they have a favorite technician. Start earning more five-star reviews. Schedule a demo today at servicetitan.com. That's servicetitan.com. RiseCon 2024 is back and better than ever. Global entrepreneur and Tampa's very own Vic Tipness brings together the world's most elite event for entrepreneurs to Tampa to help people live their max life. On April 19th through the 21st, join Vic along with MLB All-Star Alex Rodriguez, NFL Hall of Famer Deion Sanders, political analyst Tucker Carlson, and many more. Get your tickets at theriseconference.com. Invest in yourself and watch your life transform. Get your tickets at theriseconference.com today. You do not want to miss this event. Bosch Tools is the proud sponsor of the 7th Inning Stretch during every Rays radio broadcast. Engineered for efficiency, comfort, and ease, Bosch Tools are built to keep workers feeling productive and off the injured list. Bosch Tools, what hard workers deserve. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Today, we're the largest injury firm in the world, and I'm thankful to you for trusting us all these years. We'll always be here for the people, not the powerful. Injured? The choice is easy. Morgan & Morgan. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Climbing ladders to clean your gutter stinks. For only $1 per foot, let the gutter experts at the Rhino clean your clog gutters before they cause damage to your home. That's right, just a buck a foot. You enjoy your game day while they do the dirty work. Go to therhino.com and schedule your cleaning today. Your home sold in 14 days. Guaranteed at dunkinduo.com. The free iHeartRadio app has over 100 commercial free stations waiting for you to explore right now. Like Alt 2K. Don't want to be an American. A commercial free look back to alternative from the 2000s. With Foo Fighters, Weezer, Linkin Park, Green Day, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Alt 2K, and listen now. iHeartRadio, free never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. Stuck in traffic? Signal cutting out? Get online. Download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. For more information about contests on this station, go to 953WDAE.com slash rules. Welcome back into Jay and Zach. Zach Blobner, Jay Retcher. We're going to hit the college game here, both in football and hoops. And we start right at home here in our own backyard. USF Bulls. See those renderings? They got some new rent. Bulls fans love two things, wins and renderings. Tampa fans as a and Tampa gotta, fans as a whole love renderings. I got to be honest. I think fans like renderings more than wins. Some, no. days. some days it feels that no way. way. However, it's up there. It's close second for me. If you're a USF football fan, you got both this year. Uh, so good for you. Good. And thanks to a guy at the top of the helm and Alex Golish. And as we look through what's going on at USF right now, very interesting article comes out from the four letter network. ESPN's Bill Connolly compiles a list of 30 college football coaches, Jay Retcher, who will define the next decade. So this is a list that's very heavily researched and thought into and Alex Golish on the list as one of those 30 coaches he falls there's several categories he fell in the category of most exciting younger head coaches with a really great write-up of Golish where he came from what he did at USF in year one and man I cannot wait to see what he does he had a lot of hurdles in the offseason last year that he was dealing with because of the transfer portal being a new coach coming off of a bad not just year but three under Jeff Scott and he got this team to a bowl game he got them to beat the brakes off of Syracuse in the Boca Raton Bowl. 45 zip. And I, I I don't know if we talked about this on air. He got They got rings for that bowl. Mm -hmm. I love it. Celebrate winning. Yeah. Get that culture ingrained in these players and set it up for the future too. And he, on this list, makes a ton of sense as we see Alex Golish named in the top 30 coaches who could help define the game in the next decade as the Bulls get ready also for their spring game, spring game this weekend. Spring game coming up on Saturday, so tomorrow at 2 p.m., and it's sold out over at Corbett Stadium, so that's pretty wild to think. 
And then they open their season up 2024, uh, the 2024 season, Saturday, August 31st, against Bethune-Cookman at Ray J before heading to Tuscaloosa to take on the Alabama Crimson Tide and then Southern Miss before coming back to Ray J on the 21st to take on Miami. It's a, How are you feeling about your... Uh your proclamation. I feel real good. Okay, we're staying. Feel real good. I'll, I won't check in often on it until football season, but every once in a while, I got to bring it up and just see if you're in the same place. Why? What, what's going to change? What would change if Byram got hurt? Maybe. I hear a lot of good things about the quarterback position, offensive line, and defensive line. A what about what about out of Tuscaloosa? What if you hear? Is there anything out of Tuscaloosa and Kalen DeBoer that would change your mind in the next four months? Nah, not unless they. Let's see. What would it be if they brought uh, Julio Jones back? No, nah, wow. nah, that wouldn't be it. Uh, Amari Cooper. If they brought Amari Cooper and Derrick Henry back, I'd be ups- I'd be worried. That's about it. Still coming for you, Kalen DeBoer. I, I appreciate the, the that is the game. The stones, man. Zach, that's going to be the game when Kalen DeBoer oh, man. gets fired after year one and a half or year two. They're going <laughs> to look back and say it all started oh, September seventh. Oh, against man. the South Florida Bulls and Alex Golish and Byron Brown. Byron Brown's going to be a Heisman candidate after that win. He's got a new logo he unveiled. Certainly does. And IL deals are popping off for the quarterback over there. And, uh, you know, for me, again, I just, the most, the thing I want to see most that I'm really believing in is that they can take on Miami and beat them and see that as really plausible. Yeah, they'll be ranked by then. <laughs> Imagine that. I'm not touching that. What happens if they beat Alabama and Miami? Top I, ten. I don't Top know, man. I'm, I'm taking you to Burns. Like we're doing something. We're Top doing 10, it. Big. Let's get it. I'm gonna wear the Rocky helmet in here. <laughs> Rocky the Bull. That is. He just had a uh, birthday celebration. Happy birthday, Rocky! The mascot. Saw Rocky the other day. Saw the whole crew over there. If that happens, I will wear. Assuming USF allows me, the Rocky head for an entire hour. It probably stinks. I hope they clean it afterwards. No guarantee. Um, <laughs> should I tell Alex Golish next time I see him the proclamations that I'm making? Somebody has to. Nah, I think he probably knows. He's listening right now. Wild. What but, up, uh, Coach? Awesome to see him end up on this list. Awesome to get some renderings out. I'm excited for their spring game this weekend. Uh, if you can get out there, definitely do it and support this squad who, again, is coming off of a hell of a turnaround, high expectations, compete for the conference, uh, hopefully this upcoming season. And all is well when it comes to USF football. At the moment, Jay, I don't know if I can say the same thing about USF basketball. No, there's still a lot of uh, trepidation, especially with a lot of guys that are uh, hitting the transfer portal and declaring for the NBA draft. We saw Selton Miguel as well as Case and Breyer and Chris Youngblood, and we're hearing about Chris Youngblood visiting Alabama, Final Four Crimson Tide, and Nate Oates. So that's a that's a great spot for him. He's from there, I think I saw, right? Like originally, mm-hmm. or he spent some time there. Um, that would be a hell of an addition for them. This is a guy that can hit threes, can come off the bench. He's a hell of a leader, and that's the thing with Youngblood. We've seen him have some big games on the court, but you and I, I think, were more impressed with his impact on his teammates more than anything. I wonder if he'd start. Does he start? I mean, We'd have to look at their roster. I don't know who they lose from their Final Four appearance, but to be blunt, Nate Oates is going to have more talent rolling in. You never know, man. Chris, tough to, he, was tough a, to he was a conference player of the year. Yeah, Youngblood's I'm not legit. saying no. I'm just saying that he would definitely battle harder for that opening or that starting spot uh, than he had to this past season. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, But listen, Coach Amir Abdurrahim, he's hearing what everybody's saying, and he just put out a video just now on Twitter slash X, and let's hear what Coach AAR had to say to the haters. Bulls Nation. 74. Sunny out here in Tampa Bay today. Mm-hmm. You know I had to come get my work in. You know I had to talk to you. Man, Bulls Nation, a little over a year ago, all right, man, they laughed at us, Bulls Nation. They called us names. They still laughing at us a little bit. They still going to call us names. But all I know, they better put after them names. They call us reigning American Athletic Conference champions. Okay. That's all I know. They better call us champs. Okay. That's all I know, Bulls okay. Nation. Okay. You know? But Bulls Nation, I want to holler at you. Look, I can't be mad at people for making a decision that they feel like is best for them. All right, Bulls Nation, let's wish those guys the best, man. They helped us accomplish great things. All right, so but let's focus on what's in front of us, man. Focus on Jaden Reed, bad dude. Bad let's dude. focus on Daniel Tobelow, and Casey Jennings, Corey Walker Jr., Brandon Stroud. All right, C.J. Brown, these incoming guys. Let's focus on what's in front of us. All right, because a one, two, three players 
don't win a championship. A coach by itself don't win a championship, Bulls Nation. All right? It takes an entire team. All right? And understand this. We're going to put together a big-time team. All right? And our culture, our culture is elite. So, Bulls Nation, R-E-L-A-X. Mm -hmm. Relax. Tell all right? Them. We got it. We're going to be all right. All right? But look, let's stay focused on what's in front of us. All right? And understand this. You better get your season tickets now. <laughs> all right? Because remember, I told you I take receipts. All right? I know who jumped on that bandwagon late. But look, we let them stay on. All right? It ain't going to be no different. It wasn't no fluke. You don't go 16-2 and two in the conference. All right? We ain't had no buzzer beaters, guys. <laughs> all right? We were consistent because our culture was consistent. So Bulls Nation. Let's get to it. Stay focused on what's in front of us. Go Bulls. I like it. I like that. What do you feel? You didn't feel it? I felt it. I felt it. I, I, a plum. The part of it I'll, I'll thoroughly agree with is, you know, giving love to the guys that helped you win that conference title mm -hmm. that are looking to transfer potentially. We just talked about Chris Youngblood. Selton Miguel is obviously one of the others in case and prior there. Like, no bad blood, it, you know. They did great things here, and if they're looking for another opportunity, a bigger opportunity, like can't knock anybody for that in life. Um, I'm interested to see who he's filling those spots with. Right. And there wasn't any of that there. I know he talked about Reed, who was really electrifying as a freshman last year. Uh, late, too, it felt like he was starting to come on even mm -hmm. more. Um, yeah, he's a beast. You're going to need some more guys than just him, though, yeah. if you're looking to go back-to-back -back in the regular season and potentially make the dance. So. Look, I'm a big results guy, and I give them a ton of credit for what they did last year, but we know that you're only as good as what you're doing right now. So I see three big-time players leaving the team. Interested to see who he fills those spots with. Speaking of leaving and speaking of coming and going, we know that Coach Cal left Kentucky. He's now at Arkansas, and Mark Pope leaves BYU for Kentucky, uh, former Wildcat himself, national champion, former team captain, uh, yeah, a lot of people thought that it could have been Drew from Baylor, um, Nate Oates from Alabama, Jay Wright. Those are some of the names, Billy D. But all those guys turned it comes it down. down to Mark Pope. All, let's go back to that list. We know that they asked Nate Oates. He said, I'm staying at Alabama. Mm -hmm. We know they asked Drew and Baylor, and he said, I'm staying in Waco. We know that they put out a flyer to Billy Donovan and Jay Wright, and both guys were like, we're good. That's crazy. Uh, Danny Hurley was another mm -hmm. one. He was like, I'm good. That's five dudes. And I still think Kentucky's a top three program in college hoops in terms of places you want to land. Oh, easily. Resources, fans. Like, it's crazy. They treat it like high school football in Texas in terms of the 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 craziness that surrounds it at Rupp. That being said, they had five options that they couldn't get. They had to turn to a former player at a school where he hasn't won any tournament games with BYU. They're bringing in a guy who is way less accomplished than even Cal was when he came over from Memphis. I understand he's a former player, so I think that's a nice element. He, quote-unquote, will get it in Lexington like other people that are new to the area yeah. might not. But you know what Lexington gets and people that are there get? Winning. And that's why Cal's not there anymore. And it's awfully hard for a guy like me to look at the Pope hire and say that knowing it wasn't a top-five choice, that that's going to work out. Just because you don't get your desired guy doesn't mean that it doesn't work out. Let's not forget Dave Canales was, what, the 12th <laughs> guy that the Buccaneers wanted as your OC. Listen, when you watch BYU last year, that was a team that I think a lot of people weren't really, they didn't really understand what was going on their first year in the Big 12. Let's not forget, they beat Baylor, they beat San Diego State, and they went into Kansas and beat the Jayhawks early on in the season before injuries crippled them. And Houston, who was one of the top three or four teams all year long, they were tied 68-68 with a minute to go. So BYU is a good team. I love their offense. I think Mark Pope has got a chance to do some good things there. I think it has to be different. Kentucky has to be different. If you brought in a high-profile name, then you get away with getting all of these top recruits, all of these McDonald's All-Americans. He's going to have to do it a little bit differently, and I think that's what Kentucky fans want. They want guys. They want it to be more about the team rather than just the high-profile guys that are going to be here and gone. They want to sustain Winning. They want to sustain culture where they go deep into the tournament. I know he hasn't won a game yet at BA, BYU, but it was only two. He was 0-2. Lost to a couple of 11 seeds, but I think he can grow with this program. I like that he played. He's a former NBA player. I, I, I'm higher on this deal than most people, that's for sure, regardless of him being the fifth choice. You know who's not high on this deal? Kentucky fans. Yeah. Well, that's fine. You don't always have to like the hire.
But you know what? If a guy starts winning, you'll forget about it. You just had one of the best coaches in your in your history, and you are running him out of town. So if that's the case, you're never going to be happy. Well, that's that's part of my point, though, mm-hmm. is like that's if that's an indicator, which it is. No, not if. That is an indicator of what they're looking for. But they want to win. That's the key. You, correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, look, they. it's not just about winning, though. They want to win in the tournament. They won with Cal. Mm-hmm. They had high-seeded teams with Cal. So it's not just about winning for them because they're going to win a lot of games regardless. They want to win tournament games. And they don't just want to win a tournament game. They want to make deep runs in the tournament. Right. But they also Pope hasn't shown that he can do that. But they also I mean, he's only had two cracks out of it. And True, it, but he it, hasn't shown it, right? No, of course not. I'm not arguing that. But right. you're it, it's it's more than just that too, because you need a guy that's going to be able to get along with boosters. And that's something where that relationship with some of the high end guys at Kentucky that relationship dissipated with Coach Cal and a lot of those people. I was doing a lot of homework on this whole thing since Coach Cal left. What? You, what? What? I just, I don't think it was a good hire. We're just going to disagree on it. Well, no, I'm not saying that, but I'm giving you back, you know, I'm giving you background of the research and the information that I looked oh, up I, and you're just kind of. What? I just disagree. All right, let's move on. You can't be mad because I, I disagree. I, I don't care that you disagree. I'm giving okay. you background information of what I I'm saying, you. and I'm, all I'm asking for is some, like, all right, just acknowledge the fact that I put some effort into I it. Think, I think to your, your point and all the things you're saying, that's going to help him a ton on the front end. Okay, but what I'm saying is, is I, we can disagree, but um, okay. there are other th- mitigating factors other than just Coach Cal didn't win games that the relationship went sour there at Kentucky. I think the biggest thing of all of this isn't even about the coach. It's the fact that the AD that hired him is going to be retired regardless by the end of this, whether it works out or not. And the relationship with him and Coach Cal was deteriorating as well. Yeah, yeah. And again, I think a lot of that does come into the inability to win more tournament games. I mean, that's all I've heard from people in Lexington is mm-hmm. how they weren't. And they, they, but that's not to say that they didn't enjoy the high profile NBA guys being there and the prospects. Right. Like they hang their hat on that. And it's partially because it's all they've really had. They had won, but they did. They did also did win a national championship with Cal. So it wasn't like he was an Ofer there. I just think the bar is so high. Like there might not. Danny Hurley might have been the only guy that can maybe reach how high the bar is set there. Because even if Mark Pope comes in and has you're some right. success, like even if he feels what you're saying in in every capacity, that still might not be enough for Kentucky fans. They're yeah, wild, bro. They are. All right. Um, yes. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. Let's, let's get another guy in the mix here. Captain Mike Fisher <laughs> Report coming up on the other side. Uh, but first, Jay and Zach for the Golden Diamond Source. Golden Diamond Source has the largest collection of fine jewelry under one roof. So when it comes to April Birthstone jewelry, diamonds take center stage. The Golden Diamond Source's Diamond Days program gives you up to 20% off April's Birthstone jewelry. This year marks the Golden Diamond Source's 40th anniversary as your jewelry destination. And they only deal with natural diamonds. It takes billions of years to form natural diamonds. You don't want something that was made in a factory just two weeks ago. And for those first-time diamond buyers, they've got the Golden Diamond Source First Time Buyer Program where they'll educate you about the four C's and all the different shapes and styles. Yeah, and while you're at it, don't forget too, one of our favorite things Jay at the Golden Diamond Source is how the diamonds there never lose their value. That means you can go in any point, a day, a month, a year later and trade up for a bigger, better diamond. Spring clean in your home, right? That's what we're all doing right now. Well, why not spring clean your jewelry collection? Find out how much the extra pieces sitting around your home are worth at the Golden Diamond Source today. Consider also that the Golden Diamond Source will maintain and ensure that same jewelry. They can professionally clean it. They can check the settings, make any necessary repairs to keep it in tip-top shape. If you're going to buy a diamond, do what we do here on Jay and Zach. Make sure it's a Golden Diamond Source diamond, the Golden Diamond Source. 3800 Elmer Turn Road in Clearwater, always online at thegoldendiamondsource.com. If the smell of pine tar turns you on more than your wife's perfume... Then DAE is in your DNA. 95.3 WDAE at AM 620. I'm Dan Patrick, and this is Above the Noise. When you look at how the draft has shaken out over the past half decade, you start to understand just how random success can be. Look at the Texans. At this time last year, they were considered the laughing stock of the NFL. But thanks to a Week 18 victory, 4th and 20 touchdown pass by Davis Mills, Houston slipped from number 1 to number 2 in the draft. That allowed the team to select C.J. Stroud after Carolina took Bryce Young. A similar situation played out in 2020. The Jets looked set to select Trevor Lawrence with the top pick. But after a late season upset over the Rams, the Jets fell to number 2 overall. The Jags found their franchise quarterback in Lawrence, and the Jets took a swing at BYU star Zach Wilson. We all know how that turned out. It's impossible to predict how each prospect will pan out, but after seeing how these two situations did, hopefully fans can realize how razor thin the difference between failure and success can be. I'm Dan Patrick, and this is Above the Noise. The less your business spends, the more margin you keep. 
but everything else costs more. Smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system that brings accounting, financial management, inventory, HR onto one platform. It reduces IT costs and over 37,000 companies have already made the move. Now through April 15th, NetSuite is offering one-of-a-kind flexible financial programs. Head to netsuite.com slash Patrick. You know our trusted partner, TireRack.com, for their fast, free shipping, free road hazard protection, convenient installation options, and their great selection of the best tires, like the highly consumer-rated Goodyear Assurance Weather Ready. But did you know they sell other automotive products? Wheels, brakes, and suspension, just to name a few. Everything you need to elevate your drive. You can go to TireRack.com slash Dan. That's TireRack.com slash Dan. TireRack.com, the way tire... Ronnie Lane here, joined by the MVP of the Holland Group Retirement Wealth Advisors, co-founder and president, Elizabeth Holland. The one thing I love most about football is the team effort it takes to win a game. All phases of the team have to work together and be at their very best to get the job done. That's what your team at the Holland Group does every day, right? Your team of advisors, led by Steve and you, puts together comprehensive retirement plans designed to preserve and grow assets while applying tax advantage advantage strategies to make sure your clients keep every single cent they are legally entitled to. That's what I call a win. That's exactly right. And unlike most other financial firms, we do it all under one roof. This is where the Holland Group becomes your X factor and we can design a customized inflation adjusted and tax advantage retirement plan. Nobody wins by sitting on the bench. So call the Hollands at 727-469-7939 or visit askthehollands.com. Let's make the rest of your life the best of your life. QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. But I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it, and at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC Kinetics after I reviewed their protocols and everything they were doing is consistent with my own approach. Today, Dr. Scheinkup leads the entire team of medical professionals at QC Kinetics, taking this exciting medical breakthrough to a whole new level. What we are doing at QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Get lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. This is the future of medicine. Call QC Kinetics 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. Locations in St. Pete, Lakeland, Brandon, Bradenton, and Tampa, 813-305-3000. I'm Ellie Anajar of Anajar and Levine. Injured in a car crash? Never rush to settle with insurance companies and never settle for just any attorney. Demand Anajar and Levine. Our experienced legal team will fight to win you the maximum compensation you deserve. Call me, Ellie Anajar, for a free consultation and take back control of your life. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3737. Three, three. Main office, Tampa. Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors. Visit TrajanWealth.com. Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios, we are Tampa Bay's home for sports. Over 20 years and counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. Welcome back to Act 953 WDA and AM620. Let's go to the Central Florida Behavioral Health Network DA hotline and bring in the one and only Captain Mike Anderson. What's up, Cap? How are you? What's going on, fellas? Oh, what man, up, we're Cap? hanging in there, buddy. We're doing our thing. It's a beautiful day. How is it? You out on the water today? Just got off. Just oh, uh, left the marina, got done scrubbing the boats. A little breezy still. A little breezy still. Not like yesterday, but uh, still a little breezy out this morning and and we're kind of still feeling the uh, the after effects of yesterday's uh, turbulent weather. The water was really, really dirty. Uh, that doesn't normally bode well, um, and it it really didn't. Uh, clear bluebird skies. That high pressure settled in as it pushed that front through, and and uh, we caught some fish today. But it wasn't. It certainly wasn't great. I warned my guys going in that it was probably going to be a little tough. That wind was out of the north, uh, you know, blowing it close to 20 again so it uh it was a little tough but uh 
as is normally the case, most people would rather be on the water fishing or trying <laughs> to catch them than uh, than sitting behind a desk somewhere or going to work. So we uh, were able to get them out fishing and catch a few for them. So a few redfish, a few snook, a couple of trout, flounder. It was okay. Not great, but okay. And with that being said, I was thinking about you because the bad weather is so crazy. I saw like a, a, a <laughs> twist or tornado thing up in St. Augustine, <laughs> and I was like, Damn, like that's terrifying looking at on a camera. Like, what's the craziest weather thing that you've seen, like while you were actually on a boat or on the water? I'm sure at some point in your life you've been like, "Why the hell are we out here? We need to get back to shore." You know what? What? Uh, what it might be? What it? It might be the second boat parade for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Wow! If you remember that the end of that boat parade when that when they were supposed to be at the park and getting on stage and doing all that craziness down there. Um, that weather came through downtown Tampa right after we dropped the players off. And it was, uh, it, it was pretty crazy. Um, you know, we had 30, 40 mile an hour winds just creep up in that storm. And, um, you know, we were in it cause we were in the boat and we were headed back to the ramp and, uh, it was, uh, it was pretty blustery. And I've had a couple of those over the years, you know, where you're, maybe you're sitting down Fort DeSoto and you're watching, the weather looks bad to the north, and it looks bad to the south. And you, you think to yourself that, you know, hey, we're in the middle. This is good. It's, it, it looks like they're going on shore, and you know, we're going to get missed. And then as soon as they get on shore, they decide to come together right over the top of your boat. Um, so <laughs> I've had a couple of those in my career where things got a little squirrely, but luckily nothing too squirrely that we couldn't get out of it. Captain Mike, uh, I was watching a podcast yesterday. It's it's called Stick to Football. And it's uh it's a soccer bar, uh, broadcast, and JJ Watt was the special guest because he is nice. part owner of Burnley, uh, a team in the English Premier League, and he talked yep. about how <clears throat> he lo- he fell in love with the Premier League back in 2010 because his wife was a soccer player, and because there was just that that fandom and him growing up where he grew up in Wisconsin and the fans the way they were, it made him fall in love with soccer. And can you just tell us about, like, can you echo those sentiments? And is he that one guy that you wish, man, I wish he would have got a year playing with the pack because I think that would have been cool. Uh, You know what? I'm just a J.J. Watt fan. Everything about him, um, he's just one of those guys. You know, what he did uh, when when he was in Houston uh, with everything they went to there, um, the way he, you know, rallies the troops and raised money for people in need is pretty special. I don't, I don't, I don't know about the, the falling in love with soccer because of Wisconsin. I, I was a hooper, never kicked a little white ball around the field. Always, always kind of a hooper from when I was little on. No, he didn't say, so, he didn't, uh, hold on, hold on, Cap Mike. He didn't say that he was a soccer fan because he grew up there. He just said that he understood how oh, soccer fans fandom. were over there because of how you guys are uh, there in, in the Green Bay, uh, in the Wisconsin yeah. area of how it's like everybody's in it. It's a generational type of thing. And he kind of compared the two in that aspect. Sorry. I got you. I, my I bad. Got Sorry. You. No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. And, and that makes a lot of sense. And and I think, I, you know, and I don't know what it is. And maybe it's just, you know, podunk little Wisconsin and, you know, the Packers just, they've been there for so long. They're so ingrained. Um, I, I tell people all the time that, you know, as a little kid with ADD, I would go bouncing in front of the television on a <laughs> Sunday afternoon with the Packer game on, and you'd get a shoe to the head. My dad would just take your shoe <laughs> off and throw it at you. Like, what are you thinking? Get out of the way of the television. Um, so it's a pretty passionate fan base. You know, I, I was fortunate. Uh, I took, I got to take my bride up there to a game, and and she was even in total shock. You know, we had done lots of Packer games here back when, we were in the same division and um you know so and, and we had done lots of bucks games together and she was blown away by just you know the, the tailgating scene up there around lambo and and all the things that you know just go on i mean there just isn't a whole lot of vehicles on the street when there's a packer <laughs> game on tv up there so it's a pretty um it's a pretty special environment um and it's just it's just different you're talking about a small town you know they're surrounded by, you know, farms and all that stuff. You know, Green Bay is just not a very big city. And, and here, I think the fan base is just as passionate. If you do the numbers, it's just there's, you know, 2 million people living here. So you have so many people that are tied to other teams and other places that maybe sometimes it doesn't seem like you have that same kind of support. But, 
you know, if you pay attention to license plates and stuff driving up and down the road, man, there's a lot of there's a lot of diehard Buccaneer fans here with that same passion. Um, I just think Wisconsin's kind of a special place with no, you know, no ownership in place. You know, the the community owning the franchise and all that. It's it's just a real unique environment. So, from that standpoint, I absolutely understand what he's talking about. It's it's unlike any any place and any franchise, you know, in any sport anywhere. I believe. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Cap, we're up against it, so we got to run 866 Game Fish if you need a captain. And check Captain Mike and the crew out, WFLA and WDAE this weekend. We always appreciate you, Captain Mike. Have a good one. Give our love to your better half. We'll talk soon, buddy. Tight lines. Be good, fellas. Thanks. Yes, sir. The one and only Captain Mike Anderson. All right, when we come back on the other side, Blake Snell returns to Tampa Bay this weekend. How do you feel about Blake? Some people, yeah, they're... The old habits died hard. They just, they still got something on them. Some people look at him as one of the best pitchers in Tampa Bay Rays history. We'll talk about everything going on with the Rays this weekend, including that matchup with Blake and the Giants when we come back. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN Radio. Swing and a ball drilled to left off the bat of Machado. It's going. It's way back. Manny Machado and the San Diego Padres face Mookie Best Shohei Otani and the L.A. Dodgers. Coverage begins Sunday at 6 o'clock on 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. WDAE. Traffic update. Crash door blocking the left-hand lane, 275 southbound before Hillsborough Avenue. Also 75 northbound after Moccasin Wallow Road. This is right around mile marker 227. Have the shoulder block with emergency crew there. And 75 southbound on ramp from Fletcher Avenue has the left shoulder blocked. Accident working in Pinellas Park, Brian Derry Road at Belcher Road. With traffic, I'm Pat Largo. This report is sponsored by Tampa Machinery Auction. Tampa Machinery Auction is online in April. Saturday, April 13th, online bidding starts ending at 9 a.m. Free bidding starts Friday, April 12th, afternoon. Live on-site inventory preview is Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Or visit tmauction.com for details. License AP135 and AU4650. He's a former coach with two sons who played professional basketball. Satch Sullinger is a competitive individual, but his golf game was suffering because of painful joints. Right, that's real important. The golf game, right. As we get older, we create these bad habits because we're relegated to hit a certain way. QC Kinetics used regenerative treatments, all natural healing properties from Satch's own body to restore those damaged joints and get his golf game back on track. QC Kinetics Regenerative Medicine is regenerating me all natural and that's what i'm about i'm gonna tell everybody why i'm better oh and by the way looks like the competitive satch is back we're all in the same boat and i'm getting better and i'm watching them stay old go to qckinetics.com get relief and your game back call for your complimentary consultation call qc kinetics 813-305-3000 that's 813-305-3000 locations in bradenton st pete lakeland and brandon 813-305-3000 men suffering from erectile dysfunction or pe frustrated taking pills that don't work Here's a message from Prestige Men's Medical Center. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prestige Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough treatments with men lasting longer than ever without pain or surgery. Call now. Your consultation and first treatment are free. You'll see instant results right in the office. Call Prestige Men's Medical Center now. 813-538-7931. That's 813-538-7931. Live it up at the Downs, and it's almost Kentucky Derby Day 2024 at Tampa Bay Downs. Make sure to get your tickets online today at TampaBayDowns.com. If you can't be at Churchill Downs, the Oldsmar Oval is the place to experience the most exciting two minutes in sports. Tampa Bay Downs offers an exciting live racing card, followed by the simulcast of the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby, presented by Woodford Reserve. Mint juleps will be sold in the official souvenir derby glass. Louisville has the race, but Tampa Bay Downs has one heck of a party. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. If you've been injured in a car accident, call America's largest injury law firm. For over 35 years, my mission has been to deliver more for our clients, to deliver more for you. If you or anyone in your family has been injured in a car accident, call us now, as the time to file a claim may be limited. Last year, more clients hired Morgan & Morgan than ever before. Protecting America, fighting for you. Morgan & Morgan. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you.
Hey guys, Jay Retro here on behalf of my friends at Top Shelf Sports Lounge. If you're looking for a place in downtown Tampa with a scratch kitchen, craft cocktails, expanded wine menu, and located just a few blocks from Emily Arena, then Top Shelf Sports Lounge is the place for you. You gotta try their grill wings and Ebor egg rolls, fan favorites, and they've got healthy options too, like sushi great ahi tuna, the tuna bowl, and their power play salad. For more information, head on over to topshelfsportslounge.com. Everybody keeps asking, where can I go to get a drink or a bite to eat in downtown Tampa? My answer, always Top Shelf sports lounge ah the sounds of baseball but if you have hearing loss you miss out on the action audible hearing centers provides a better quality of life for those suffering from hearing loss offering free hearing tests by trained specialists at their 26 locations don't buy hearing aids online get yours custom made Make an appointment for Audubel Hearing Centers at floridahearing.com. Better hearing through professional care. Proud partner of the Tampa Bay Rays. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Opening your home to showings means strangers can open anything. Don't worry about getting around to spring cleaning. Sell your home with a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain Real Estate and skip the cleaning and organizing necessary to sell your home. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson. Say goodbye to the stress that comes with a traditional home sale. With a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain's Real Estate, you can receive an all-cash offer and close within days. No showings, no open houses, no costly repairs. Mark Spain Real Estate makes selling your home stress-free. Check them out. MarkSpain.com for the guaranteed offer. No obligation. That's Mark Spain com and start packing. Jake from State Farm. I just beat my running PR, so I'm celebrating. Keep celebrating when you bundle and save with the State Farm personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer availability and eligibility may vary. If you're the victim of a car crash, never rush to settle with the insurance companies and never settle for just any attorney. Demand Anna Jar and Levine. Call 1-800-747-FREE for a free consultation and take back control of your life. Main office Tampa. Come bowl with Big Rig and Producer X at 98 Rocks Bowling for Balls at Pin Chasers on April 13th. Featuring bowling, food, and fun. Proceeds go to the Testicular Cancer Foundation. For tickets and more information, visit 98rock.com. The Bush Gardens Tampa Bay Food and Wine Festival is back every weekend and now through May 19th with over 75 different culinary delights to sip and savor. Plus, free concerts like Hoobastank this weekend. Save on tickets, fun cards, and annual passes at bushgardenstampa.com. Your perfect closet starts with the right finishing touches. And during the light and accessory event at California Closets, every $1,500 of design, lighting, and accessories you buy earns you $500 toward your custom design. Visit one of their three showrooms or CaliforniaClosetsTampaBay.com to book your free design consultation. Climbing ladders to clean your gutter stinks. For only $1 per foot, let the gutter experts at the Rhino clean your clog gutters before they cause damage to your home. That's right, just a buck a foot. You enjoy your game day while they do the dirty work. Go to the Rhino.com and schedule your cleaning today. Struggling with ED? Call Bull Oak today at 813-219-1919. Running to a meeting or just need to get away? No problem. Download the free iHeartRadio app where you can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free Free. never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Broadcasting from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios. For everyone who feels a cowbell is the only way to make noise. We are 95.3 FM, W237CW, Pendellis Park. And the mighty 620, WDAE, St. Petersburg. Streaming live right now on your free iHeartRadio app. All your sports, music, talk, and podcasts. Hey, Rays fans, free has never sounded so good. Welcome back, Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. And speaking of back, the Tampa Bay Rays are back in action starting tonight at Tropicana Field. And, of course, our coverage starts with the inside pitch. 
with Ronnie Lane at 5.30, live from Tropicana Field. Second portion of the pregame show at 6 o'clock. First pitch, 6.50, Rays and Giants. The drive with T-Kraz will be there as well, 3 to 5.30 today. Eric Neander and Mark Topkin amongst those joining Tom Kraz, Nikki. And uh, after a day and a well-deserved day off yesterday, Zach, they're looking to kind of build on some of the momentum they got from their road trip, taking two of three from Colorado and the Los Angeles Angels. Yeah, and it's a, you know, I don't want to say it's a big series. They're all big series, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's easy for us to say that. But it's important for them to try to find some momentum after taking two series in a row, after winning, you know, uh, four out of six. And another opportunity here, you get home. I think the day off should help, hopefully. Um, You know, another thing that they were dealing with on the road that they won't hear, for better or worse, is the uncertainty of what Brandon Lyle is going to be able to bring. For better or worse, Ugh. right? Like there might be a game where their bats are all flat and you and I are like, oh, yeah. who knows? Maybe he'd run into one and, and he'd be the pop you're missing. Um, I can't imagine another scenario where we'd be clamoring for him to be yeah. in this series. But yeah, you you want to pick up where you left off. Now, a guy that we do know will be in the mix, Jose Caballero has been amazing mm-hmm. at the plate. Can he keep that up? Uh, we'll continue to watch how the catching divide happens. Like how much Ben Rortvet versus Rene Pinto do we get in this and, you know, you'll look for some of these pitchers to kind of bounce back. I, I'm going to pull up the pitching pairings. Uh, is is that one guy pitching this week? He sure is. <laughs> um, sun, oh, no, Sunday's the oh. good one. I, I've seen the Sunday matchup. That one we're excited about. Wagpacker? Is that who's pitching? Tonight. It's... Wagpacker. Tomorrow's Pepio. And then Sunday, it looks like Tyler Alexander. <sighs> lefty on lefty. Well, it was going to be Eflin like a week ago when they were projecting, so they must have switched things up a little bit. Mm. I hate that. Um, I hate that because Sunday's going to be such a big day for so many reasons. Uh, look, I'm excited to see Pepio get another shot at it mm-hmm. after a, an awesome outing from him. <sighs> <laughs> for real? Is that right? You're, You're kidding dropped. me, right? No. Nah. They're pitching Waggus back tonight, and then they're they're looking to pitch Alexander on Sunday? Yep. So you take so you decided that one of them wasn't a big enough problem. You want to <laughs> double your issues, spread it out, and alleviate some of the pain. God, that's so frustrating. Where where is that? Is that MLB.com? I think I heard that? it from the guys. <sighs> I can't tell if you're Topkin messing with me. No, I think it was Topkin and the guys that said that that's the expectation. Yeah, well, that sucks. Because I thought it was going to be Eflin and Snell, and obviously Sunday's already going to be special because it's the Rays Hall of Fame game where Dave Wills, late great play by play voice is going to be inducted. So I was really, I mean, I'm still looking forward to the game regardless. I'm excited to be out there and I know they're going to have this awesome ceremony pregame. But yeah, I'd prefer to see Eflin on the mound than Tyler Alexander. Agreed. Not just for the like novelty of wanting a great pitching matchup, but also because I don't want to see Tyler Alexander starting games for this team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mark Mark Topkin tweeted out about two months ago, uh, two months, two hours ago. (laughs) Yeah. That's a long way ago. (laughs) Waggus back tonight. Pepio Saturday, Tyler Alexander or opener on Sunday. (sighs) Doesn't really give you that ringing endorsement. So now not only do they not have five pitchers, they can't even string together four in a row. About two and a half. Uh, They've got two and a half. They don't have three and a half. They have three. And now you're pushing (sighs) Eflin's. I mean, I, and I, I don't know. They had the day off. So it's not even like they're they're in this. I hate it. I hate it. Wagaspak has been bad. Uh, nine ERA, nine point zero zero ERA. So you're saying that you're not a wag packer? No. And then Tyler Alexander, I probably my most my least. Ru- no, him or Shenton have been the two guys. That have, <laughs> they've gotten it the most for me this year. Uh, I don't see that slowing uh, down. Oh man, these guys are on your list. Yeah, these are on your list. What are yeah. the things that make uh, Zach m- the most <sighs> mad? I, I mean, I find these guys every year on the Rays, and I'm just like, it's I, not. It's not just players; it's things in sports in general. I like to name this list uh, the uh, <laughs> in memoriam of of Derek Sharp punching the punching the ticket list. Well, what's on your ticket punch list? Well, you know how I feel about multiple empty net goals in hockey. Yes, Definitely empty net towards. goals. Right, not all of them. Dugas, what else? What you else? get one. Empty you don't. Net you, don't goals. you shouldn't get extra. What else? Ovechkin would have like half the amount of goals in his life if he what? didn't score multiple goals. What else goals. just really grinds Zach's gears? Uh, I mean, that's definitely up there. In baseball, it's, it's usually players each time. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a few on the Rays every year. Jeez, I can't think of it. Not Rich Hill. Who was the other old guy they had? They had two. Kluber? Not Kluber, before Kluber. They had two guys. 
I can't think. It of wasn't that. Charlie Morton. No, no, no. Charlie freaking Morton. It's the man. Rich Hill. It wasn't. Who was the guy? Uh, was he from St. Louis? I don't know. There's been Waka. Pay. Was it Waka? <laughs> Waka, your ass the hell home. <laughs> God, he was bad. He was good for everybody oh, else but my the Rays. God. I liked the signing, but yeah. it just did not work out. It's wild. Um, and, you know, another pitcher that's going to be in the building on Sunday at Tropicana Field. Yeah, let's talk about that instead. Is one Blake Snell. And, listen, this is a guy, and I'm very curious to see how he's going to be received on Sunday. Do you think he's going to be cheered? Do you think he's going to be booed? So I don't think that Blake Snell is poorly viewed by the fans in terms of how they feel about him. I'm more interested in how he makes the fans feel about the Rays. If that makes sense. Okay. Blake Snell won a Cy Young. He's only ever said good things about this city, about this franchise, about this area. Blake Snell loves St. Petersburg. He's got his spots. And there's just a lot of good vibes coming from him his entirety here. Mm -hmm. And he's also had a ton of success. We bring up all the time that he literally was like their only starting pitcher one year because they had so many guys injured. That was where they were doing the bullpen and opener day. Uh, four out of the five. And then it was Blake Snell. And then he won 20-plus games that year. And then he was a Cy Young guy. I think fans still love Blake. Snellzilla. Like, mm -hmm. there, again, there's so much. Yeah. That inflatable somewhere hiding in the tropics still. <laughs> like, Blake was beloved and still is, I think, from the fans. But I wonder when I ask fans, okay, we know you love Blake Snell. We assume you love Blake Snell. That's been the majority of what I hear from about him from fans. But how does he make you feel when you think about him when it comes to this organization? And I think people get very torn because the number one thing people bring up with Blake Snell is still when he was pulled in the World Series game. And that's the number one thing people use to kind of pull down Kevin Cash. And then there's also this sentiment out there that after that and because of that, Blake Snell forced his way out or basically asked to be traded. He ends up in San Diego. That being one of the rare times we can look at it now and say the Rays lost a trade. That trade did not pan out well for Tampa Bay. Not at all. And Blake Snell won a Cy Young with the Padres last year. So clearly they lost the trade. It was coming off of one of the lowest moments in terms of, you know, him throwing heat, getting pulled. It doesn't end well. It's one of the most controversial. I actually would say it is the most controversial moment in Ray's history. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. So when you think about Blake Snell, yes, you can love the player. You can be happy for his success so far and all the things. But does Blake Snell make you feel good? butterflies and good things about the organization or is it a reminder of some of the things that maybe piss you off what is your impression of blake snell whether it's his time with the rays or after give us a shout 888-546-4620-829-45 on the bartow 4 dae text line from the 813 snell will be cheered for sure no one is mad at him everyone's still mad at cash for removing him from the world series when he was dealing and I wouldn't say everybody. You cannot say everyone. No, but like, there is a portion. I, and I'd say it's a strong or it's a big enough portion that, like, it's not just the minority. There are – maybe it's 50-50. I don't know. But there's a big enough chunk. But the one thing that really I try to remind people of, and we bring it up. I brought it up a lot at the time. I bring it up now. I know on a very personal level in a lot of different ways that Blake Snell did not force his way out of Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. It was very much a mutual decision. It was unfortunate because of – it happening right after they lost the World Series and that being such a polarizing moment in baseball. It wasn't just in Tampa Bay. Like, baseball was really polarized in that moment for seeing Blake Snell get pulled and the analytics and how much they matter and yada, 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 yada. But I can tell you, again, that it was not a decision of Blake asking to be traded or the Rays saying, we have to trade you because of this happened. Those two things, I don't want to say they had zero to do with each other, but, like, they weren't the heavy reasons why. Blake Snell being pulled and that all happening in the World Series was not the major reason that they traded him that offseason. That's just the way the Rays do business. And it was unfortunate because of the timing, but there's no bad blood with Blake and Kevin. Blake loves Kevin Cash still mm -hmm. to today. Yeah. He's still a huge fan of Kevin Cash. So for all of you out there that pin Blake Snell's being pulled to like one of your reasons, your main reason why Kevin Cash, quote unquote, isn't any good in your mind, like Blake still loves Kevin at the time. And even though he wanted to stay out there, he respected the decision. Yeah, he. I think what when people think that he forced his way out, they don't really take into you know into account that he just didn't make a big stink about it. He kind of knew what the operation was going to be. He's been here. He understands that the Rays don't pay a bunch of guys. He understands that they usually trade guys before you know at the peak of their value. He didn't raise a stink about it. He just kind of went with the flow and was like, "Hey, this is part of the business. This is part of the game." Uh, and he went out to the West Coast. He's a West Coast guy. So 
Uh, I'm sure he was excited to go to his new team, but mm-hmm. what you know, what's very the sense similar of, to Tyler Glass now? This yeah, what's, what's by the, the way. sense of crying over spilled milk, knowing exactly uh, what was going to happen? Right, both of those guys knew what was going to happen, and you didn't hear either of them put up a stink because that's the way the Rays operate. They try to trade guys to you know maybe a little bit earlier than than too late, and unfortunately for them and the fan base, the trade for Snell didn't work out. And, and hopefully that the, the glass now trade works out a little bit better. I think the return instantly, if you just look at the two right-handers that were involved, I think early returns on Pepio are a whole heck of a lot better than Luis Patino. That's for sure. A hundred percent out of the gates. Like we're yeah. already there. He's already got better control and he's got just his electric stuff. And we'll see DeLuca, if he can get healthy and kind of help out. Uh, he's more of like a depth piece. I think uh, unfortunate to see him among a long list of rays get injured. And the other aspect of this Jay that you and I talk about is how the starting rotation is something the rays are very good at bolstering year in and year out. And obviously this year it's one of my frustrations. Um, but you look at since the Snell trade, like they had McClanahan at the time in the last couple of years, they've had Tyler Glass now. They brought in Zach Eflin. Oh yeah, they converted guys from Rasmussen Springs and Littell all in those years. That doesn't even count the fact that they added Savali last year, that Taj Bradley's up and coming. Shane Boz is returning and he's a youngster. And I give in right now is a bad time to make this argument because of how many are banged up. But I'm talking about basically when the Snell trade was made, it was a situation you look at and you're like, I, I, even if Snell goes out and balls out, like the Rays are going to replenish that area. And I, I would argue they did a pretty yeah. good job of it. No, it's, it's, and I'm with you. It'd be one thing if he left and there was a gaping hole at this, you know, in starting pitching. Where it's like, man, if they only had Blake Snell. Well, last year without Blake Snell, everybody was talking about this could be the best rotation in all of baseball with McClanahan and Rasmussen and Springs and a possible Glass Snell coming back. And then you add Zach Eflin in. Oh, yeah, of course, Littell and Savali and now Taj Bradley. Nobody's looking at this situation of, oh, my gosh, the cupboard is bare because Blake got traded. No, I mean, it sucks. You want him individually. You want him because yeah. he was a good pitcher. He won the Cy Young here. But it wasn't one of those things where it was like FOMO. Like, oh, we don't have a good starting pitcher because that deal was made. And I think another part, too, Jay, we've talked about this a lot on the hitting side. If the Rays really want to change their image without kind of completely changing how they do things, sign a guy like Shane McClanahan to a long-term deal. Mm -hmm. I understand he's banged up. I understand all that. Dude was an all-star two straight years. He's had these health issues. We understand that. All these pitchers are these days. We went over the pitching things multiple times this week with arms. The arms are falling off these guys across the league. Everybody. But, like, if you really want to change the perception of this organization, I bring it up because Terry in Tampa says on the Bartow Fort DA text line, it's par for the course, unfortunately, for this organization to let good talent like Blake Snell go. It was an unfortunate situation in the World Series, but Kevin Cash had to make a decision, and I don't think Blake Snell takes that personally. Also, we do not dislike him in Tampa. That's very fairly put. And, again, if you want to change the perception and you're the Rays and you're like, you know, we've been to the playoffs five years in a row. Why aren't people showing us love? Why are the fans still fighting us? I mean, the stadium's a big part of that. But aside from that, you and I have mentioned, like, giving Randy or Rosarina a bigger contract might not be something that they would do from a, an analytics standpoint, an age standpoint, but he is the face of the franchise right now. Yandy Diaz is a guy who just got an extension, a short one, but he just won the batting title. Like, give him, like, a longer-term mm-hmm. thing. And I think on the pitching side, when we're talking about a guy like Blake Snell and talking about the next ones in line, I know Shane's banged up right now. And you just did this with Tyler on the extension while he was hurt and getting ready to come back. Give Shane a five, six-year deal right now. I mean, you did it with Brandon Lau, and every year we fight about how dumb that was. So, Yeah, I just had this conversation with somebody the other day about the long-term love from the Tampa Bay Rays and the experience with the Tampa Bay Lightning. And you look, it's not always – it's one thing to not tie up your best players – but it's another thing, and we live in a comparative society, when you see like it's, see a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning, and what did they do after they won the Cup? It wasn't about Cooch. It wasn't about Point, Stamkos, Hedman. They tied up who? Sorelli, Sergatev, and Chernak. Your second-line center, your second-line left, your second-pair left-handed D, and your second, right? I mean, you're talking about guys that they're not your top four or five players but they tied those guys up long-term so that you know they're going to be here a while. Race fans, I, I really do. I, I think they want stuff like that. I think it, it's – these. there's people that are going to go support regardless, mm-hmm. but there's also a muted type of excitement, and I, I don't think the Rays organization as a whole really gets that. 
They look at it as a business, and I understand that for them it, it's worked out. It's five years in a row making the playoffs, and it, like you say, if you have a chip in a chair, you have a chance. But if you're continually, continuously trying to grow this franchise and, and, and continue to plant roots here, you have to show that there's a long-term commitment to players so that people can latch on to them and buy their jerseys and follow them. I mean, I can't tell you how much it means to have certain players that you grow up with and you grow up watching. That's how you build a fan base. That's how you build that affinity into an organization that becomes generational. We just talked to Captain Mike Anderson, right? We talked to Captain Mike Anderson about being a, a Green Bay Packers fan and that generational fandom. I'm sure his great-grandparents were probably Packers fans, right? That's what we want as the years go by. We want people to latch onto the Rays and be like, man, I... This guy played 16 years for the race. He was the first guy to do it. Right now, I would, I'm would. i very curious who's played the longest for the Tampa Bay Rays. How long do you think it is? I don't even know. Are you talking about all time or just on Let's the current Let's say all roster? time. Tampa Bay Rays, all time. The longest tenured player. Um, I mean, Longo is the first one that comes to mind uh, just because of the length of time mm-hmm. that he was here. Uh, it felt like ten, it wasn't Zobris even 10 was years. For a while. It wasn't even 10 years. Think about that. Yeah. We have never seen a player in the Tampa Bay area play for the team for more than a decade. We've already seen that with multiple players on the, we're going to see it with Mike Evans, which is crazy because the football, you know, NFL stance were not for long. And we're going to see that with Hedman, with Stamkos, probably going to see that with a guy like Vasilevsky and Sergachev, Braden Point. That's, it's hard, man. You want guys that are lifers. You want guys like, Derek Brooks that spend <laughs> damn near what fifteen years? How how long did Derek Brooks play? Ton. He was here forever. That's what we're clamoring for the race. I think yeah. that'll help. No, I agree. And and again, I I also think that there's a marriage in the middle. It doesn't necessarily have to be like analytics and doing the business the way they're doing it. Seventeen years, or like just tying guys up and going for like roster lack thereof roster turnover. Yeah, there's a way to do both. Fourteen. And I'm surprised the Rays haven't put more time into figuring out how to do both, um, given you have to bring up the fact that they did give a mega deal to a guy that is never going to probably play again. Mm-hmm. And definitely, we're, there's no love lost on this show or in this area for that guy. That being said, they did give him a major deal. Yeah, Brandon Lau is another guy that got a big deal and hasn't you know, really been panning out. Like if Brandon Lau in 2019 replicated that the last few years, we're talking about how awesome it is that they have a cornerstone player. Unfortunately, the two biggest gambles they've made contractually have been Brandon Lau and the dude that's stuck in the DR. That's tough, man, when you gamble on those dudes and they don't pan out. So they do try sometimes. Kiermaier was here for a long time, also dealt with injuries, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, But the guys, and and that kind of works, I guess, against giving these deals to some of these players is like, when we do it, it doesn't work out. But you have to keep doing it because the fans want those kind of players in town, even if you haven't hit on them really since long ago. And it's not like you paid these guys three hundred dollars, three hundred million dollars either, right? I mean, Wanderers is what one eighty, and if it turns out a certain way, you're going to be able to recoup some of that money. Brandon Lau, it wasn't a three hundred million dollar contract, right? It was a long term deal, but it's not like you're paying him twenty five yeah, a year. It was a great he's value still, bet. For yeah, them. he's still making a lot less than some of the other players, right? So yeah, term wise, it, it was a. A bold move, but to think that the Rays are screwed when it comes to salary cap because of the money that they gave Brandon Lau, I don't necessarily think so. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't categorize it as that. Um, I yeah, I know what you mean, I, like long term deals. I'd say they're more screwed because they're starting Wagus back and Tyler Alexander this <sighs> week. And you got that. My right. excitement just went out the window. Into the weekend, there's plenty of things going on this weekend. We got. We'll give you a Masters update. Tony Fee now teeing off on the the par three sixth right now. We've also got some Rowdy's news. Wrexham, the Bolts, and UFC 300. Don't go anywhere. It's Jane Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Today, Tampa Bay Rays baseball is live on WDAE. Deep down the line to the corner, home run. Don't miss any of the action as the Rays take on the San Francisco Giants. Coverage starts at 5.30 on the home of every Rays game all season long. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Streaming across Tampa Bay on the iHeartRadio app. From the Safe Touch Security Traffic Center. WDAE. Traffic update. 
crash still blocking the left-hand lane, 275 southbound before Hillsborough Avenue. Also 75 northbound after Moccasin Wallow Road. This is right around mile marker 227. Have the shoulder block with the emergency crew there. And 75 southbound on ramp from Fletcher Avenue has the left shoulder blocked. Accident working in Pinellas Park, Brian Derry Road at Belcher Road. With traffic, I'm Pat Largo. This report is sponsored by eBay Motors. eBay Motors is here for the ride with the parts you need at the prices you want. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they're guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Hi, I'm Benny Jr. with Bartow Ford. You've heard me say a million times that we are the premier place to buy your new or pre-owned vehicle. What I don't get to say often enough is that Bartow Ford covers all your automotive needs. For example, our body shop. We have the largest body shop in Polk County and the most certified technicians. If your vehicle has damage and in need of repair, don't forget it's your vehicle and it's your choice. Tell your insurance company that you want to bring it to Bartow Ford, where we're different, and we prove it. Ronnie Lane here, joined by the MVP of the Holland Group Retirement Wealth Advisors, co-founder and president, Elizabeth Holland. The one thing I love most about football is the team effort it takes to win a game. All phases of the team have to work together and be at their very best to get the job done. That's what your team at the Holland Group does every day, right? Your team of advisors, led by Steve and you, puts together comprehensive retirement plans designed to preserve and grow assets while applying tax advantage strategies to make sure your clients keep every single cent they are legally entitled to. That's what I call a win. That's exactly right. And unlike most other financial firms, we do it all under one roof. This is where the Holland Group becomes your X factor and we can design a customized inflation adjusted and tax advantage retirement plan. Nobody wins by sitting on the bench. So call the Hollands at 727 469-7939 or visit askthehollands.com. Let's make the rest of your life the best of your life. Think you have to travel to New York or Los Angeles to get a deal on a five-carat colorless diamond in a one-of-a-kind designer setting? What if I told you people from those cities came here for these exquisite pieces of jewelry? Here to International Diamond Center. Welcome to the IDC Prestige Collection, a truly breathtaking array of large, rare diamonds, two carats and up, hand-picked for maximum brilliance and certified by the GIA. In addition, International Diamond Center is one of only 14 dealers in the world offering De Beers Forever Mark Exceptional Diamonds, featuring magnificent diamonds five carats and up, including the rarest and most exquisite diamonds on the planet. The IDC Prestige Collection and the Forever Mark Exceptional Diamond Collection are for the discriminating shopper with refined taste and uncompromising standards. No need to travel or have it flown in from a broker. It's all here, every day. One of America's most impressive displays of large, rare diamonds, along with the most sought-after design rings in the world. International Diamond Center, your direct diamond importer. Tampa, Clearwater, Lakeland, and Sarasota. At Progressive, we know money can't buy you happiness, but money did help you buy an RV, which means an excuse from working Saturday with your insufferable co-worker, Dave. So money is helping you listen to birds chirp instead of Dave chirping about how his toddler is fluent in three languages. And it's also why you'll be smelling pine trees in the air, not Dave's tuna melt reheating in a microwave. So save money by bundling your RV or boat insurance with home or auto from Progressive and buy more happiness or something close to it. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. Okay, now everybody in. I volunteer for the third row. This sacrifice is my destiny. I can curl my legs up like a pretzel so everybody's soup cases can fit. And hey, it's actually super nice back here. Finally, a three-row SUV where everybody wins. The Lexus TX. See your Wesley Chapel, Tampa Bay, Clearwater, and Sarasota Lexus dealers. After suffering an injury, you may face many hard questions. What will tomorrow bring? Which firm should I choose to represent me and my family? At Morgan & Morgan, we will hold your hand every step of the way. From our one-click sign-up, mobile apps, and 24-7 availability, we make it easy to get your case started right from the comfort of your couch. All firms are not the same. Injured, the choice is easy. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Get your most accurate home value estimate at DuncanDuo.com. It's the VC Show. What's up? I'm Vince Carter, and my podcast, The VC Show, is coming back. 
Season two of the VC show is going to be bigger and better than ever. Every week during the NBA season, I'll give you my real insights and opinions on the league. Vince Savage reigns supreme. Subscribe to the pod and listen to the VC show with me, Vince Carter, on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, what's that show? It's the VC show. When you can't crank up the speakers in the office, plug in those earbuds and download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Perez, veteran move, good positioning, watch out. Gagliardi miss it. This could be a wide open net. Artiaga finds home. It's 5-2. Let's go. 5-2 Tampa Bay. Gagliardi a gaff, and he gets stung. Gaff. Gaff from Gagliardi. What a fun word. What a bird. Yeah, gaffer. What a bird. Uh, yeah, the Rowdies kicked butt last night in Miami. 5-2. Two. 5-2. To two. And that includes two posts they hit early in that game. The first goal scored was actually an own goal by a Miami. Ton of fun. I actually watched that one on the uh, ESPN app. I pulled it up. Yeah. Easy to keep an eye on it there. And we're excited here because we know that the Rowdies will always be home sooner rather than later. It's only a matter of time, Jay. And uh, looking forward to the game against El Paso Locomotive coming up. I know we've been giving away tickets don't forget for that game that the gates open at 6.30, kickoff at 7.30. You can take it as low as, what, 20 bucks? Yeah, you can't beat it, man. Oh, my God. Al Lang, beautiful place to go watch any sport, uh, especially soccer, football. How about Wrexham? If you've been following along with the, you know, welcome to Wrexham, and it, they're about to get promoted again. Ryan Reynolds, Rob McElhaney, yeah. you've been following them along. Uh, it looks like they need five points from their final three games. Mm-hmm. Um to guarantee promotion to League One, which is the third tier of English football. So you got the Premier League with Man U, Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City, and all them. Then you have the second division, which is called the Championship. And then the third division is League One. Now, they are right now in League Two. They were in the National League, which is the fifth league. So they went from the National to League Two. And now it looks like they're going to go to League One. I mean, Zach, we could be talking about Wrexham Man U in about two years in the Premier League. That would be wild. Have those guys, like, officially made their money back yet? I mean, I haven't yeah, seen the numbers I say, recently. I would say yes. And I know they invested a ton mm-hmm. into it, like, not just the original investment, too, but um, the sponsorships and all that, though, they got, like, from TikTok and, like, mm-hmm. all these different... They, like, they've had to have made their money back by now, Yeah, right? I think so. And they're getting promoted again. And Pretty again. great story. And I think the coolest part about this is you've seen now a lot of other people. You mentioned uh, J.J. Watt earlier. Mm-hmm. They're like, I'm going to buy some stock in a, at a, a soccer club at some <laughs> random place in the country. And, He's in, in the there. World. And mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of like prompted others to do it. I think that's really cool. I love that aspect yeah. of it, man. I think it's great. Uh, so, Rowdy's get the rest of the weekend off. Shout out to Wrexham as they advance forward. The Masters going on right now in Augusta. Bryson DeChambeau and Scotty Scheffler tied atop the leaderboard at seven under. Scheffler through two. Bryson through eight. Max Homa is in third place through 13. He is six under. What so, happened to Hogard? Hogard. He was up there like two seconds ago. He must have He must have put it in the water He's or something. He's still doing and then Danny Willett uh, tied for fourth as well at five under. So those are the keep- guys right now. Yeah, right? we're keeping a close eye on four everybody uh, right players. now. And of course, uh, Tiger Woods is the other guy that last time I checked, he was one over. I have his uh, man, him and my guy Jordan Spieth really just struggle. Boss five thousand um, projected cuts at three over par. That's good for Tiger. That's what I'm looking for. Where is he at? Oh, projected cut is four over. Oh, it's now. up to four now uh, because man, it is guys are sucking. <laughs> Tiger's one over. So he's projected 13. to make the so cut. Tiger's going to make the cut. Little breathing room there, too. Listen, well, it's, when the day started, there was 26 guys or 27 guys that were under par. Now, 12th or uh, 19th, sorry. Yeah, it's dropped. Today's been tough. Wow, it well, is. I told you as early as this morning, even when Tiger and his crew and some of the guys that didn't finish yesterday were wrapping things up and from their first round at like 7 a.m., all the broadcasters were talking about how easy it was going to be. And dudes outside of Max Homa no. were struggling, struggling. And he's only one under today. When you look at the best score today, Ludwig Oberg and Patrick Reed, uh, two under. 
That's it. That's tough, man. Well, that's why on day one you look at a score like seven under from Bryson, and, and that's huge. If you can put up a seven on day one. Come on, Tigre. <sighs> Tiger looks like he's uh man, this these, this course looks impossible to play. <laughs> This week, I'm surprised. Just this is just the regular. Oh, you're on. Uh, this is holes it's, four, five, I and six. I think we're frozen on this. Oh no, no okay. I think it was there four, for a minute. I was like, is it Ricky frozen? Fowler at five over? Yeah. It's Max Homa one. looks like he's got a pretty decent par putt on fourteen right now. So mm-hmm. we'll keep you abreast of that as we get closer and closer to the end of the show. Tampa Bay Lightning back in action tomorrow in the nation's capital against the Washington Capitals. A five thirty puck drop there in their final away game of the season before they return home on Monday night to take on the Buffalo Sabres Wednesday night, the final game of the 2024 regular season against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And they flexed that game to put it on national TV. But I think the game that it was supposed to be was Islanders Penguins, which could be a play in game oh my for the playoffs. So the, they fumbled the bag and we saw Yikes. a similar situation last year where um, the lightning played the Leafs. I think in the last game of the season, the Austin Matthews sat up, sat out. Mm-hmm. So, I really wouldn't be surprised. If Kucherov has 100 assists and Stammer has 40 goals, they'll, I'm sure the popular opinion was that they should sit, but that just means you don't know who Nikita Kucherov is. Uh, he ain't sitting. Um, but Toronto, they would sit Marner. They would sit Matthews. They would sit Tavares. They've done stuff like that before, and they'd probably do it again. Yeah. I don't say I blame him. I don't say I blame him. If you, know, if you know where your spot is and you're locked up, he's looking to get 70 goals. He's at, what, 68 now? It's it's wild how Austin Matthews is, has scored that many goals, and I don't even think he's a top two MVP guy. He's had a sensational. A lot season. of guys that have had great seasons. You don't even mention yeah. Connor McDavid, like in there. We just look at McKinnon and Kucherov, but uh, Panarin's been really Pasternak. solid. Pasternak, like it's been a really strong year for a lot of these guys. It makes the conversation so tough. Outside of the Bolts, keeping an eye on the other two teams to see which one they'll play in the playoffs. Uh, the Bruins are up a point on Florida right now with an extra game. They play in Pittsburgh, another team fighting for their life, Saturday, uh, 8 o'clock puck drop. So that one's a little bit later. On the same hand, earlier in the day, the Panthers are taking on Buffalo down in sunrise at 5 o'clock. So uh, the Panthers probably have to win out and hope that the Bruins really struggle down the stretch here to have a shot. But it's still open. Yeah, there's still a chance. A little bit. Wow, that would be crazy. Possible. It is possible. Yeah, that's things would be changing quick. Yeah. I'd be like, oh. I'm working on remote next week, buddy. It's a lot easier to drive to Sunrise than it is to fly to Boston. And it's more favorable for your nose and smelling things, too. You got that right because it stinks up in there in Boston. Um, I can't even say that word. Uh, I'm hearing, and it's not locked in, but I am hearing that it looks like the, the Lightning would start their playoff series on Saturday. So don't know that for sure. Not 100%. That's some of the rumblings I heard. So if they're going to do the standard, you know, on a day, off a day, you would look like Saturday, Monday, and then the playoff opener at home, game three, would be Wednesday and then Friday. But I don't know. Maybe they would push a game. Maybe they would push it a day back. So it would be double Saturday nights in that situation where it would go Saturday and then Monday night. And then they'd have off Tuesday, Wednesday, mm. because they do that sometimes early on. And then the Lightning would play again Thursday and Saturday at Emily Arena. That makes sense to me. There is a concert on Friday, I heard, I think, at Emily. So they have to be cognizant of that. Hey, I always love the time of the year. We're worried about when they're playing in the postseason yes. and not if they're playing in the postseason. Quick note, another team that's looking to get into the playoffs, your Orlando Magic, Tampa Bay. I can't believe you did. <laughs> Not your. Uh, no, joking aside, obviously, vicinity-wise, the Magic right down the Who? corridor. they closest team, and they're in the four spot right now, aren't they? I think Atlanta's close to us. <laughs> Closer than Orlando? Yeah, but the traffic up there, as um, bad as I-4 is, whew, it gets worse. That's when what you get I'm saying. To you might get to Atlanta before you get to Orlando. I'm joking, you people. You through Atlanta quicker, though. No, that's you just to get there. just as bad. Uh, but the Magic, a huge game tonight. They're in Philadelphia taking on the 76ers. Orlando looked pretty comfortable like a few weeks ago. They're fighting now to stay out of those playing games, but they are in the four spot. So five. Or they're in the five now. Yeah. So Celtics, Bucks, Knicks, one, two, three. Cavs, four. Magic, five. Pacers, six. Sixers, seventh. And Heat, not eight. And then Bulls and Hawks, nine, ten. So these are big pivot games, whether you want to be in the play-in or just safely mm-hmm. on the other side. Yeah, because all ten teams in the East are, are locked in. Yeah, Paolo's been great for them this year. Really stepped up. Shout out to the Magic. I hope they make the playoffs. I'll make it over there for a game. No, they're in. They do. They're already in. 
I hope they make it not in the playing games, though. I hope they make it into, like, the actual playoffs. How do we view the playing games? More teams involved. Yeah, I like that, but, like, I don't really get excited about them. Yeah, I think that's like I'm like, I'll watch afterwards. Yeah. Let me know who gets through. Last year was good, though. Last year, both of them. No, were, I, I mean, know. Look at I Miami, agree. what they were able to do. 100%. And then they ended up winnings, but... Uh, but I don't eh. like go out of my way to like watch the playing games. Yeah, I just think there's a lot of teams that make the playoffs. It's a little too much. <laughs> Better for Jay's nose at Miami. Good Told job, you. Ben in Clearwater. Told Sniper, you. no sniping. We used to call that back in the day. Yeah. And then UFC 300 coming up this. Listen, if you're going to watch one card this weekend, it's probably UFC 300. There's so many good. The first fight is Davis and Figueredo and Cody Garbrandt which is two former champions in the UFC. That's the first fight wow. in the prelims. So there, this isn't one of those where, like, if you've ever watched a UFC event, there's a good chance that you're going to know a guy in every fight. And it's not always like that. You're like, oh, I never heard of this guy. I know pretty much every single person on this entire card. It is going to be fantastic. A couple of uh, title fights as well at the top of the card. Go check it out. Trust me. If you have an opportunity to watch UFC 300, it'll be worth it. It'll I'm excited. Good. I'm excited about that. I'm excited for the weekend, which we are very close to. We'll have what's on the menu when we return, what you missed during today's program, what is coming up next week. we got some things up our sleeve here on Jay and Zach, and then the drive with Tom Krasnicki uh, at the Trop. We'll preview his show a little bit, too, and yeah. talk about what's on slate as the Rays welcome the Giants to town, a team that's actually based in San Francisco. Yes, not Santa Clara. Speaking of reality. Speaking of reality, here's a reality. It's baseball season, baby. Stop dealing with your gutters. Save time and money with the Rhino. And th today it's a lot nicer in the Tampa Bay area than it was yesterday. And I hope you didn't have any issues with your gutters. But if you do, check out my friends at the Rhino. They've got the world's only fully enclosed gutter system, which provides ultimate protection. No more climbing, no more clogging, no more hassle. The Rhino gutter experts hit a solution that'll be a home run for your budget. And if you act now, act now. You can get a $300 service discount. Plus, the Rhino offers military and senior discounts. So don't wait. Go to the Rhino.com and schedule services today. The Rhino.com. We're here to bat for you. Wa pow! Play ball! The most complete rundown on all things baseball across Tampa Bay and around the majors. It's the inside pitch with Ronnie Lane. Swing it a drive. Deep to left. Go! Presented by the Central Florida Behavioral Health Network and the Department of Children and Families. 60 minutes before every weekday race game. Right here on the radio home of every race game in 2024. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. The home of the race. Streaming live on Alexa and the free iHeartRadio app. Trade-a-thon is always one of Brandon Ford's most popular sales events. So Trade-a-thon 2024 is going, going to, to be, be unbelievable. unbelievable. Going to be unbelievable. You want to get rid of all those toys you don't want anymore? Cars, trucks, boats, campers, motorcycles. We don't care if you have to tow it in or push it that last mile. But you don't need to trade anything to get our Trade-a-thon deals. You don't need to trade anything to get our Trade-a-thon deals. Like gorgeous new 2024 F-150 Crew Cab STXs with the black appearance package, huge 12-inch touchscreen, and premium 20-inch wheels and a custom spray and bed liner for just $44,900. For just $44,900. We have 100 of these trucks. Or get 1.9% for 72 months on new 2023 F-150s. Please note, during the sale, every customer qualifies for the branded Ford price. And no other Ford dealer in this part of the country can beat that price. No hidden fees during Crate-a-thon 2024 at Brandon Ford, the largest volume Ford truck dealer in America. Highway 60 and 301 in Tampa and at BrandonFord.com. At International Diamond Center, you can take your time and design and meticulously create the most unique, most exquisite ring imaginable. But if that's not your thing, we understand. And that's why we created the IDC Signature Collection. Ready to wear rings at every price point. It's a complete ring that's already done. We pick out the small diamonds and we pick out the center diamond and it's assembled and it gets our stamp of approval. IDC owner Keith LeClaire. People like this because of the value that they're receiving because they're getting a complete ring without having to piece it together themselves. Even if your budget is $1,000, IDC has a ring you can take with you today with a quality stylish setting and a GIA certified diamond. We did all the hard work for you. Listen, we're the experts. And our job is to pick the right diamond for the right setting at the right price point. And I think we do a pretty good job of it. Discover the No Stress IDC Signature Collection. Buy it today. Propose with it tonight. International Diamond Center. Tampa, Clearwater, Lakeland, and Sarasota. And online at shopidc.com.
RiseCon 2024 is back and better than ever. Global entrepreneur and Tampa's very own Vic Tipness brings together the world's most elite event for entrepreneurs to Tampa to help people live their max life. On April 19th through the 21st, join Vic along with MLB All-Star Alex Rodriguez, NFL Hall of Famer Deion Sanders, political analyst Tucker Carlson, and many more. Get your tickets at theriseconference.com. Invest in yourself and watch your life transform. Get your tickets at theriseconference.com today. You do not want to miss this event. Every once in a while in my job as an anesthesiologist, I will see a patient who comes in for orthopedic surgery who's very young. And it is really hard to kind of keep that on the inside because I know I could have helped that person. Dr. Daniel Zuckerman knows the younger you are, it's likely you'll require another joint replacement down the road. He also knows there's another path to relief without invasive surgery, and that's QC Kinetics. If only they could have come to QC Kinetics and tried regenerative medicine first. There's a really good chance that we could have helped save them from that surgery and use their own natural healing factors to heal their own joint and then they would still have their own joint in and not a piece of metal or plastic. QC Kinetics, the natural solution to agonizing joint pain, an alternative to surgery that you should check out before going under the knife. Call now for your free consultation. 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. Locations in Bradenton, St. Pete, Lakeland, and Brandon. 813 Three oh five three thousand. Live it up at the Downs, and it's almost Kentucky Derby Day 2024 at Tampa Bay Downs. Make sure to get your tickets online today at tampabaydowns.com. If you can't be at Churchill Downs, the Oldsmar Oval is the place to experience the most exciting two minutes in sports. Tampa Bay Downs offers an exciting live racing card, followed by the simulcast of the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby, presented by Woodford Reserve. Mint juleps will be sold in the official souvenir derby glass. Louisville has the race, but Tampa Bay Downs has one heck of a party. At Fair and Farrah, no matter if you're working on a case worth five thousand or a case worth five million, you give that case the attention it deserves. Because to the client, that's their big case. Farrah and Farrah, here for you, here for good. Tampa. Dealing with your gutters is a swing and a miss. Let the Rhino Gutter Experts pinch hit for you. Schedule now and you can get a $300 discount on services. Plus, the Rhino offers military and senior discounts. So don't wait. Go to therhino.com and schedule services today. The Rhino, hitting home runs all day. Struggling with ED? Call Bull Oak today at 813-219-1919. Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios, we are Tampa Bay's home for sports. Shouting go Go Bulls Bulls with horror. Raised for over 20 years and counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. The X Factor. Presented by Hungry Howie's Flavored Crust Pizza. New York Mets host the Kansas City Royals tonight from Queens. An outfielder Brandon Nimmo has been hot at the plate over his last five games, going 9 of 22 with a pair of homers and 10 runs driven in. He is tonight's X Factor. X Factor brought to you by Hungry Howie's Flavored Crust Pizza. What's on the menu? Everything we have up on jnzack.com, including Captain Mike's fishing report and our chat with Sportsnet's Aaron Bronstetter. <sighs> Good news, man. UFC coming back to Tampa, possibly in July. That is music to my ears. That is so freaking awesome. What do we got coming up on the show next week, Zach? Next week, we got more fun on the program. I know we're not going to be in one day because, let me see, Thursday's a day game for the Rays. We won't be in for that, but uh, Mark Topkin set to join us to talk all about the Rays Giants series on Monday at 1230. Think Denard Span will be back here. Yeah, he'll be back tomorrow. In uh, studio week, with yep. us Tuesday at one o'clock. We'll get that full hour with him. Eric Erlinson on the bolts and looking ahead at the postseason on Wednesday with us. Uh, what else? We got a lot, that, we got a lot of things uh, in the works, but we're certainly excited about getting uh, to talk a little bit about the Rays and, and the lightning next week. I think we're still two weeks from the draft. Yeah. Uh, we'll have Masters reaction. Whoever wins that on Monday, we'll be talking some golf. Final uh, Rays uh, Lightning home game, uh, regular season game on Wednesday. So the playoffs will start either Friday or Saturday of next week. And we'll hopefully have uh, some of our friends from the NHL Network on, Mike Kelly, Michael Rupp. Uh, so excited to chat with those folks as we get closer to the NHL postseason. The Drive with Tom Krasnicki today, live from Tropicana Field. Looks like he's going to have Eric Neander, Mark Topkin, and the like joining him on the program. He's on from 3 till 5.30. And then the inside pitch with Ronnie Lane, also live from Tropicana Field. 
The second portion of the pregame show at 6 with Chris Adams. Well, first pitch, 650 right here on the home of Rays Baseball, WDAE. It is Rays and Giants. That's what's on the menu. That is what's on the menu. Presented by Bartow Ford. (laughs) Tired of big city prices. If you're not going to Bartow Ford, you're going the wrong way. Bartow Ford, if it's for sale, it's on sale. Don't go the wrong way. Go to BartowFord.com. Can't wait to see who wins this weekend at Augusta. Yes. But you and I are just, Come on, Tiger. You want Tiger to get, get get to Saturday. It'll make the tournament. That'll make this weekend that much more fun, Jay Richard. You got that right. And uh, everybody, head on out to Tropicana Field on Sunday as Dave Wills gets inducted into the Hall of Fame. His rightful place amongst the all-time greats from the Tampa Bay Rays. So large WDAE contingent out there. So make sure you go by there and say Hello. A big thank you to Captain Mike Anderson, Aaron Bonstetter, and you for joining us on the program. Job well done by Johnny Dugas, Hacksaw Johnny Dugas. He's got his hype man, Chris Mathis, in there as hype well. Man. Hype man. For Zach Blodner, I am Jay Retcher. We'll see you guys on Monday right here on Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Raise up. Peace out. Pow. Thank you for listening to Jay and Zach. If you missed anything from today's show, head to the Jay and Zach blog at 953WDAE.com or listen to on demand podcasts on the free iHeartRadio app. Stay tuned. The Drive.